And hello, Lorimbo, how are you? I'm terrible, as every other day of this week, this month, this life. I'm your host, Lorimbo, and I'm joined today and forever, probably, by my British friend here, Mr. Hart. Thank you for introducing me, that means a lot. Yeah, we're here. And it's only the two of us for this one, because we're the only ones that have actually uh, played Stormgate. I think next week yeah. we might try and wrangle a special guest, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll uh, we'll do we'll do some surprises. Uh, we'll try to to make this a fun and interactive series for uh, for the viewers, uh, and we'll try to get something someone interested. Ah, you made me disappear I again. Knew Stop it. Doing I knew that. it would happen. I knew <laughs> Stop it. Stop doing this. <laughs> Stop doing okay. Production is a bit scuffed, but after all, what did you expect? Professional production that, that was never gonna happen. That was never gonna happen. You don't know the, the half of it. Uh, how many discussion we got into <laughs> because, of it, <laughs> because of certain things. It's don't impossible. worry about it. It's impossible. Anyway, it's fine. Let's I have some bad news to start things off. Bad news my father has predicted the collapse of the US dollar. I'm just saying, <laughs> he's called it now. <laughs> if, if next week we're all eating canned food, just know that he called it. That's all I'm saying. Okay, okay. And, uh, uh, so I was about to say before Hart interrupted us with this terrible news uh, that uh, we. Uh, let's actually introduce what the fuck we are doing. Uh, what is this, Hart? Tell me. This is. Working title currently is All Things Real Time, right? I, like, I don't think it's a working title. Okay. Them, but I like Final it. title. I like... We'll never change it. We'll never All change it. It's never time. changing. All Things Real Time Episode 1. Uh, sponsored by All right. Things Toilet. Things Toilet. Of course. <laughs> true, true, true. Episode the name one. of this... Yeah, the name of this one is State of the Gate. Yeah, so okay. some of the older ones of you might uh, recognize uh, the very obvious uh, joke that we're making here. But for those who are not... Uh, so savvy, look up state of the game and enjoy a piece of StarCraft history. Anyway, the aim of this podcast will be to talk about new and up and coming uh, uh, RTS games, but also talk about some news relating to the RTS world. Uh, I'm your yeah. I, I'm gonna be the professional side of things. I'm gonna I think uh, or by professional I only mean that I'm good at the games. Uh, while Art is unfortunately absolutely awful. I'm kidding. Uh, Art is a grandmaster player too in StarCraft at least. Uh, I don't think too bad I'm, in Stormgate either. Actually, having played a yeah. little bit, I'm okay. I'm, I'm getting there. But, yeah. but we're going with uh, we're going with all things real time, right? Rather than picking yeah. just Stormgate or just StarCraft or anything, because you played a lot of Zero Space, and we're going to talk about that at some point. Yeah. Probably not yeah. today. Because we no, really want to get yeah. into it. We've got 13 pages of manifesto to read. Yeah, no, I'm not going to read the 13 page manifesto. But yeah, we'll, uh, the reason for it is honestly, guys, okay, listen to me. Look at me, monk. I'm not trying to ruin your business. I genuinely have a, a public service announcement. RTS are an amazing genre. And I've, I've, I've had so much fun recently in the last months playing different RTS that I never thought I would enjoy. And well, while there have been some problematic interaction with the RTS world and some things that I will not, I did not like, and I will discuss those further, I overall learned a lot about actually, actually even myself, like just my experience with video games in general, and I enjoy, I took something from everything. Like I feel like I become, I became a better StarCraft player by introducing myself to new concept and new ways of, of thinking RTS. My love for the journey is so deep, I specifically ask for this to be a more all-around all encompassing uh, podcast uh, compared to a Stormgate or a Zero Space one. So we're going to be talking Stormgate, we're going to be talking Zero Space, of course, because those are a new and exciting RTS. Yeah, sure. But, um, yeah. But, you know, I think now is a good time as any to kind of, um, I don't know, pull rank a bit. Let's, let's, let's talk about that a bit. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is, we're both pretty, pretty good, both pretty into RTS. I think so. For me, it started with Age of Empires One, which I played when I was like a, a very young kid, um, on like a really, a really crap uh, compact laptop. No one rem even remembers the brand, you know. I think they got bought by Dell. Anyway, that's sort of where I started. And then StarCraft, I played on release. So I started off in WoW. I played Protoss in like Gold League, I think. Um, and then when HOTS came out, I was pretty hyped for that, and I played a lot more. 
and uh, so it's like Diamond for the start of Hearts and then Masters towards the end and the start of LOTV uh, as Zerg then. Um, I think I don't know. I played um, I played a, a bit of a bit of a lot of them. I also played. Um, oh, the name is escaping me now. How disappointing! I played a bunch of them. I played a bunch of them. I played. Uh, they are billions. Is the is the one I was thinking of? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I played everything. All of the Age of Empires, including the four, I'm pretty good at it. I played, uh, I'm a StarCraft Grandmaster player. I'm a, I was a top player in Zero Space. I was a top player in Stormgate previous patches. I won a tournament in, uh, in Stormgate, which is also the reason why you might see my name at the top of the ranking at one point. Uh, we need to get you to play Company of Heroes too, says the producer. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I love RTS. I've only started in 2020, actually. Uh, I'm just a monster. I'm insane. I'm cracked. I became great. Wait, wait, you forgot. You forget. Year. You forget. You have the speed running re uh, world record, no? Yeah, I also have some speed running world record, but for all achievements and stuff, because I can play the campaign for seven years. Uh, I just really like RTS. And I'm I'm very good at them. Yes, I'm go. You know, fuck this fake humility shit. I'm top one hundred one percent in almost every RTS that is actually good. So no brood war. Fuck brood war. We are brood war haters in this game. No, I'm kidding. All the brood war, bro. Today I made a brood war joke. Like people in media start saying, "No, brood war is actually a really solid game." <laughs> like the brood war fans are insane. You don't get I'm it. Not you that. don't get you it. Don't, I just don't get it. You don't get I it. I just don't get it. Uh, anyway, okay. that's the intro. That's how. That's so no one can criticize us. Is essentially what we're saying. We're we're, we're free from criticism, just because uh, we. No, we're insane we, we know so. more, and we're, we're we're really we're really hardcore pro gamers. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So anytime you feel uh, you feel yourself uh, at odds with what I say, of, for, of course, don't blame it on difference yeah. of opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blame it on the fact that you have no skill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, if, you think, if, 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 if he tells you the sky is green, do you think, okay, is it maybe that Lorimbo is wrong? And then you think, no, it's that I'm wrong. It's that and I'm then, wrong. And then move on. Lorimbo is the god gamer. Anyway. Okay. Let's, okay. Today let's we're talk talking about, about Stormgate. Yeah. Okay. We are talking Which, about... We will be, yeah, you've played a lot of. If you can, can you check your Steam and tell us? Be honest. Be honest. Uh, do I have to be honest? Uh? Yes. How much? Okay, wait. I'm, I'm gonna have a fucking ah ah. Wait, wait, wait. Cut, cut for time. Wait. Okay, I need to check really quickly. Stormgate. Where the fuck is Stormgate? I have so many games. Huh? Oh, fuck. how much do you think it is? Huh? Okay, I, I'll, I'll go first. I currently have fifty-six hours. But that's over. We got the game at the same time. I think you're at over 150 easily. I'm 170. I'm close to 200. <laughs> so yeah. I played a lot of Stormgate. You yeah. cannot. You cannot tell me I didn't play the game. I played 200 hours of it. <laughs> Do you know it's impossible anyway. to balance the audio levels on this podcast? <laughs> All yeah, I yeah, see yeah, is yeah. that it keeps peaking, and I turn it down, and it peaks again. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is okay. This is what I'm known for. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna say the sponsors. Uh, the sponsors have brought uh, us. Uh, <laughs> you need Danny and I to balance the audio audio. True. The sponsors uh, have uh, brought me this microphone. One day we'll do one episode of podcast with the old one just to let you yeah, hear the true yeah, yeah, Lorimbo yeah. experience where yeah. it's fucking shit uh, and it's impossible to tell me what, what I'm saying. So let's get dive straight in. Let's not de dilly dally. What are we talking about? What's our okay. first point? Here's what I think we do. Because we need to give some context, because we played the previous beta that not many people had access to. Now that the yep. uh, Kickstarter finished, loads more people are going to get access. Here's what I think. I think we go through the patch notes for the most recent beta, which came out January 30th, and we'll give context when the unit comes up in there with the changes as they made in there. And then we'll just... Yeah. We'll go like that. Yeah, okay. we, can talk, we, think we can talk about balance problems and previous patches. I think that's fine. Yeah. So let's let's start right off. Do you have a link, actually? I, uh, I, I, I realize... Yes, I have the link. Yes. Production needs to do everything. Come on, production. What the hell? We pay you exactly $0 per hour. I expect a work well done. What the hell? So I send you the link. The first thing, though, is co-op. Let's talk about co-op. Quick, 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 though. Quick, quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Quick co-op. Okay. New we played hero. a few. We played yeah. a few co-ops. And, and they're, they're good fun. I mostly played the uh, Vanguard hero. So I haven't really played much with, uh, with the new co-op hero. I played a bit more. Uh, I did not play the new hero, unfortunately. 
because I didn't have time. Uh, but I did play a bunch of it in the previous patch. Uh, and I, I'm, as far as I can tell here, outside of the new hero, uh, there, there's not much else changing from the actual co-op experience. Like the actual yeah, exactly. mission and map are the same. Yeah. Uh, I'm reading the patch notes right now. So I'm really excited for the new hero. I really like the fact that they're going for a better co-op experience. Uh, I mm -hmm. think one of the biggest problems of StarCraft, which I, of course, by the way, for those who are not clear, both me and Art, main background is StarCraft. We are both Grandmaster players in that. For those who don't know, Grandmaster are the top 200 players in a server. So uh, the the main issue that, had, that StarCraft had was not monetizing properly. Yeah, uh, sure. And I think the, the entry into the game was really hard, uh, really nasty. I know I didn't play the game for a long time because it was too hard, too difficult to get into. Uh, RTS in general have a bit of this problem. I really like that they're investing more into co-op. I think the co-op is fun. It's a bit yep. boring because it's only one map. So, of course, there's gonna be there's gonna have more expansion, more hero. Well, more yeah, stuff new like heroes is content. a good direction for, with that for sure. Yeah. Yeah, new new hero, for example, is a good direction to have, add more content, add replayability. I think the map itself is fun. I think the heroes are really strong and allow you to do some uh, some interesting stuff even at a higher difficulty level. The difficulty felt quite well balanced to me actually, in the sense that. My opinion is that the difficulty of a co-op mode should go in a range from extremely easy that even the most basic player can play it yeah, to sure. hard enough that even top grandmaster players uh, they shouldn't really struggle with it but they should at least be like oh wow that's really cool that's fun that's yeah. interactive it, it should be I a challenge to yeah. it, should be a stand. it should not be something that you can be beat with pure mechanics <laughs> if it allows you to think a bit more about your strategy i think that's a good direction for the game i've enjoyed the the, the the cop for uh, for storming it. I think, for example, the high on cannons shooting on your base uh, when you miss an objective are cool. And I think they're balanced quite well in the sense that they don't instantly kill your base the first time. But from the second and third caravan, you're gonna start losing units and buildings. Uh, and I think that's really cool that they don't immediately punish you. The numbers might have to be changed a bit because some of the heroes are really strong. Uh, yeah. I remember especially the 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 hero for. Um, for uh, protector, for Vanguard, the one that yeah. we were that, uh, for Vanguard, of course. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, Mon Monk is gonna kill me if tomorrow. I, if tomorrow I'm found dead, like with a with a shot on my back, you know who it was. It was the Stormgate developer. No, I'm kidding. I will get everything wrong because I paid so much of everything. Uh, I will sometimes say English uh, because yeah, I played yeah, yeah. a lot of Age of Empires. The hero for uh, Joan of Arc. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The hero for Joan of Arc. Yeah, exactly. My my biggest enemy. Anyway, it was good. I enjoyed it. I think the biggest problem right now is to replay a build, but that's an easy yeah. problem to fix, to be honest. Yeah, and even uh, StarCraft, they kind of drip-fed the maps. StarCraft had it a bit easier because some of the maps are ported more or less from the uh, campaign, and then they just did some like minor changes. And if you've got a fun campaign mission, you can just port it, use that, use the assets, use the map. It makes it a bit easier, whereas obviously they're going from ground up. And, you know, for ground up, it, it works really well. The... The map is interesting. Again, it's not really hard. Uh, we played on Brutal, and it wasn't wasn't hard at all. I, think but, I played on Brutal Plus 2 at one point with yeah. Phoenix, I think. But, you know... And we were also it, playing a, without Tiro, so... But, it, but it's I not the mode for us, but it's a good mode, and it's good to have it in the game, for sure. I think I might enjoy it, actually. But the pro the biggest problem for me is just the content. Like, I, 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 I'm a whiny bitch. I, I need content, bro. I need the heroes, I need the maps, I need the cool interaction, I need the cool things to do. Like, if I do one thing three times in a row, I'm already bored. So I want... To, that, that, that's the problem. But no, that's... I mean, that one is, like, not a design problem. It's not a balance problem. It's just, like, you have to give them time. I'm completely fine with it. And I think they're going in a good direction with, uh, for example, this new hero added, which I'm reading their build, and they look kind of cool, I have to be honest. The other thing I have to specify, for those who don't know, because, remember, this is going to be become available to the public eventually, but some people might not have be, been able to play the game due to um, performance issue, I think. Mm -hmm. Especially co-op can be a bit tricky on that side. Yep. Um, co-op factions have slightly different units than the 1v1 mode, yep. uh, similar to how StarCraft balances it. Uh, so there are a lot of weird units that are similar to units that are present in the game, but have weird mechanics or new cool uh, twists. And I think that's fun. That that's a layer of depth that is uh, absolutely not trivial. Uh, compared to the usual one. 
moving on, I think we said enough about Copra. Yeah, yeah, Do you have sure. anything to add? Let's... Next thing is on there is the 1v1 ranked leagues. And I think yes. the, the thing there to say is that they've kind of added Aspirant, Bronze, Silver, Gold, Platinum, Diamond, Master, uh, which I think everyone will kind of get. It's not you know, super complex, not really difficult. Uh, and then they're three to one, and once you get to the top of tier one for one league, you move to the to the tier above. But they've also made MMR transparent, and you can now see your your MMR, which is which is good. So I remember having uh, a discussion with uh, I think it was Monk, or at least reading Monk uh, p- talking about it uh, in the previous alpha regarding uh, ranked points and tiers. So let's explain. Uh, look, okay, let's explain the way I understood it. Okay, I have to be honest here. It's the way it was explained is a bit unclear. So I'm not 100% sure of what I'm about to say because this seems to be contradicted by by what uh, what, okay. what what I'll the actual you. text says. Uh, the fact checks are going to be a bit harder. So correct if I'm wrong. But the way it works is the following. You have rank points and MMR. The yep. thing that matters the most is obviously, as always, MMR. Your yep. rank points are limited by MMR. Now, the thing that I'm not sure about is that if they're limited by your current MMR or if they're limited by the top MMR that you have achieved this season. It's one of the two. It yeah, says it's, it's the, the latter. Top... Yeah, the top MMR that you get in a season. Okay. But then there's a modifier on it, which is like the uncertainty, as far as I know. So... Yeah, I think, yeah, it's definitely, the way it's written is max, but I, it doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me to run it that way. Yeah, it's a bit it's it's a bit weird, but the gist of it is the following. Ranking points get, can be gotten quite easily by just playing, regardless mm-hmm. of if you lose or win, because you're always going to win way more ranking points. I'm not even sure if you can lose it. I think you can't. At the actually. moment when I lose, I don't gain any. I just, but I don't, don't lose, lose any. Either. I just gain them when yeah, I win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So this is uh, um, the the way it works. So ranking points you just get by playing. The only thing that, well, not only the only things, but the things that really matter is going to be the MMR. The MMR is going to be de- determine your cap and in a sense might even be taken as uh, your true skill. What I do like, I was really worried about this, is that Monk, I think, or at least he said, I remember him saying that he kind of wanted to hide the MMR. Monk, look at me. Look at my beautiful, handsome eye. I love you, brother. I love you like a brother. Don't make MMR hitter. It's great like this. It's perfect right now. Maybe change the formula a bit. I don't know about that. That's I'm a mathematician, but I don't care too much about the formula. Don't make it hitter. If you make it hitter, you're just gonna make it like you're just just gonna create a giant problem. Games that have it hidden, such as League of Legends or even Age of Empires 4, that has is kind of hidden, create situations where people uh, keep uh, b- uh, whining about getting too many points, too few points, uh, the lucky account, too many I'm smurfs. Gonna get an out- too many smurfs, I'm mm-hmm. gonna get a new account. Because, uh, blah, 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 blah. It's just keep it, please, Monk. I beg of you. From an Italian brother to an I, think, I don't know where it's come from. It's somewhere in America. I'm not quite sure. From, to a, from an Italian bra- brother to an American brother. Don't make MMR hidden. I promise you. I promise you it's going to be better. If it's not better, if Stormgate ever fails for MMR, you can come to Italy and ask money from me. You can, you can point that gun at me and ask me for money personally. But please don't make it hidden. It's a personal request. Anyway. Moving on, I think the, thing, the tiers are cool. Uh, the only thing that I will say is thank God they went from three to one because I've been playing Age of Empires. Oh, God, Hart! It's going. Why? Okay. No, it's gone again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The cable uh, is, because, is, uh, is because, coming unplugged. That's fine. Uh, yeah, the, the cable is destroyed. I've been, uh, I've been playing Age of Empires 4 where it goes from one lowest to three highest and it's been fucking with my brain. So keep it like don't don't invert it, please. Like it's it's perfect the way it is. I don't have any problem with it. Let's move on. If you don't have anything to say yeah, about it. Now we we're getting into the real kind of meat of the changes. Just why you you went off the screen because I was trying to find the the full list. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it in the order that it's written down in. Um, so at the top is the habitat upgrades. Now I don't know how much you know about these because I don't know how much Vanguard you've played. I played a decent amount of Vanguard. I would say I played around 20 games, but it was okay. a while ago, so I'm not sure. Like, I, oh, I wait, wait, so were these changes not in yet? No, 
They were okay, 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 okay. So essentially, I can explain it pretty easy. Essentially, when you get to tier two, so it requires the um, command center upgrade, you can start upgrading your supply depots, which give you, they're called habitats, but okay, you can upgrade your habitats and they give for the same cost as one habitat, but obviously the, the upgrade is very quick. Um, and they give you two options. So it's either the solar habitat upgrade or the rampart. Um, they're both okay. They're both good. I can see where they're going with both. Essentially, the um, solar habitat gives you a little bit of more supply, as they both do. But it gives you the um, ability, which is increases the production speed and attack speed. Though, obviously, I think every structure, that's mutually exclusive. It's a, if it's a bunker, it can't make any... Uh, it doesn't make units, so the production speed doesn't matter. Of a nearby structure, by 25%. So, it's a not insignificant boost... It's, it's, it's nice, and it means that you need to think a little bit about your sim city because it's nice to have a supply depot or habitat near to your barracks so that when you get to tier 2 command center, you can just upgrade it uh, and then start producing stuff You know, 25% quicker. It doesn't stack, but it doesn't also require much control or like a, a micro at all. You literally just click on the structure that you want it to, to speed boost and it'll just go for the rest of the game. And that to me is actually kind of a missed trick. I think they should change that because at the moment, because it's just auto cast all the time, it doesn't really cost you any kind of attention. There's no like skill check on it. So my com for comparison, I'm thinking of Chrono Boost from StarCraft and they've gone back and forth over the years, but historically Chrono Boost was energy and you would spend it and it would time out and then you'd spend it again. For a bit it was on 100% of the time and you just switch which building you wanted it on. Though obviously that was global, you could put it on any building on the map. Uh, and they've now gone back to making it energy again. Uh, and I think that's a decent mechanic, it's just having energy build up over time and if you don't spend it then you're losing efficiency. But obviously if you got to 100% energy on your Chrono Boost and then just dumped it onto four different buildings, you're not losing out too much. So there was not this like huge trade-off between um, you know doing those actions all the time really regularly versus like dumping it as soon as you hit 100 percent energy and then you do get punished if it goes over 100 obviously i, I don't know what you think about that mm, i do think that it's a good idea but the the thing i worry about actually the thing i was most interested uh, from this change uh, is the the keyword nearby so the thing i was thinking of is that um for rampart rampart is a bit of a weird ability because the problem with it is uh, uh, you need tier 2, but there is a somewhat limited window in which this uh, is uh, useful for the intended purposes uh, and not useful for other purposes. What I mean by that is the following. In the early game, like you would, you would like this to be good in the early game uh, where uh, to prevent ba basically being all in, right? But then again, hmm. you need the tier 2, so it's it's not doesn't really work that way at least. I, I don't think it's worth to go that high uh, yeah. just so to get this thing. Uh. We can give some more context there. The tier two is quite expensive. So it's two hundred yeah. let's say minerals. Luminite, right? Okay. Two hundred luminite, luminite and, ethereum. and ethereum. It's two hundred uh luminite and a hundred ethereum. So Vanguard actually tends not to mine much ethereum. Actually all races or oh, factions. Tend not to mine that much ethereum. You know, you want to leave it as late as you can. And that's because the um the Ethereum expands over time and then becomes enriched. So leaving it as long as you can is actually better. It's better to leave it and then switch onto it and mine more later than it is to kind of constantly mine. It's a bit like how Zerg plays, I think, in that you don't want to take four gases as soon as you can unless you're doing something with it. Um, and even and, and then so Zerg just plays off of one gas and then you just live off of one gas and you just get link speed and then a bane link nest and that's you know you can do everything you need to do off of one gas, right? Exactly. And my point was, uh, uh, the weirdness of this ability is that if you think about it, when is it actually used? So it's not great in the early game. Uh, maybe in the, mid game, in the mid yeah. game, you basically um, you put it on a turret. But that creates the really annoying, which I already fa like ran into, I think a really annoying interaction in which you, you're trying to kill a, a single turret, which has pretty good DPS, the, the Lancer one specifically. Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, it's a banger slash turret in, depending on the units that you put it in it has different abilities for people who don't know how it works the lancer one has a pretty powerful uh, it's not really area of attack but it is multiple targets it's a bouncing uh, 
attack, which is already pretty strong. Uh, it yeah. can feel basically impossible to kill. Between the, the armor, because it lasts a long time, and the, the repairing, you can hold that choke with a lot of units. Uh, and it, can, it feels just very frustrating, uh, especially because, as I said before, it can, uh, can feel like there's little counterplay to it. Now, to be clear, uh, we're going to discuss balance a bit more finely later on. Uh. Yeah. This is not a balance complaint. Infernal is not going to lose games uh, because of this. Or it might happen, but it's usually some other problems. My complaint is that the interaction itself uh, feels a bit forced. As the Infernal player... You can't really not attack if you want to attack. Eh? And it doesn't focus, for example, due to the way overcharge works, eh? focusing on the workers, which is not done by default due to, to how the AI works, etc., can also be a bit tricky. So it creates a pretty miserable experience. It's similar if you have ever had that experience of trying to kill a planet that is being repaired non-stop and also not being uh, focused. It's similar to that, but with the key difference that uh, Stormgate, unlike Starcraft, is very choky, as maps that are very choky, and uh, doesn't really have something like a bailing uh, to, to blow up the mineral lines. It does have a similar unit, uh, but it's usually used in slightly different contexts. Yeah. Especially in the mid game, you cannot afford it. Though. Yeah. For the, for the same reason, kind of, that you don't really want to be mining loads of gas just to get the tier exactly. 2 command center really early. So those are, those are the two new yeah. depot changes. They're yeah. okay. I think basically you just put supply depots down. I always just get the solar habitat one and just increase my production slightly. But it doesn't feel super interactive or... I don't know. I can't think of a good word. In StarCraft, there's lots of chores. And I think the chores allow good skill expression because a player with high APM will be better at doing all of those repetitive actions kind of on time and, you know, quickly, efficiently. Um, having something like this that's just passive all the time on feels a little bit weird. I disagree. I don't think the problem with this design... I do agree that there's a problem with this design, but I don't, I don't think it should be APM sync. The chores are usually called APM syncs. Uh, what really yeah. bothers me is not the fact because I actually like removing the APM sims uh, to make the game more accessible to newer players. I love this idea. I love it even for myself. Fuck, I'm a lazy fuck. I don't want to, to inject no more. But uh, the, the problem is that an APM sync specifically has the, problem, has the same problem. It's non, uh, it doesn't have a choice. So the reason why Chromebus is much better than StarCraft is because it allows you to make meaningful choices. It's very important, believe me, trust me on this, guys, that no matter what you, you think about StarCraft, if you are, for example, playing PvZ and you're getting cheesed, the way you use your Chrono Boosters is crucial. It's mm -hmm. also ex exacerbated by the fact that Chrono Boosters share energy with stuff like uh, battery overcharge or recall, etc. So there is a meaningful choice in using that Chrono Boost. There is no choice here. You don't, there is no reason not to do it. There is no action to be taken. Uh, there, there is no interactivity. You might as well just buff the, the, the basic production of the racks, which of course will be stronger than this, because at least this way you have to build a depot. Uh, but essentially, uh, it results in the same idea. You don't really, you don't really interact with this mechanic. Uh, more, you, you just do it and then it's over. You don't think about it ever. In fact, I, I will not be surprised if in the future people create build orders in which you do it and people don't even understand why they're doing it because it's just such a non-interactable thing. You don't have to do anything. Uh, you just put it on and then it works. You're like, oh yeah, I do a solar habitat. Wait, what does the solar habitat do again? I don't know. It's part of the build. I, of course, I'm talking more on the lower levels. Obviously, before yeah. it... but you understand what I mean by this, right? Yeah, for sure. I think if you were being like really um, like optimistic, you could say that the a really good player might think like, "Oh, I'm going to put this supply depot now here, so that when I build my hangar bay later, it will be nearby and I can boost." And it's like I, I can see people doing that. I think I've yeah, absolutely. I've done that, but for the most part, you'll just end up having a supply depot near your production and you'll be like oh i guess i can you know upgrade that one because it's there and it's you know it's, it's helpful i don't think people are thinking that far ahead right now um yeah so it, it basically doesn't work out that it rewards kind of forethought or anything like that in my opinion 
I do like the um, actually the nearby thing though, because at least like it, it introduces yeah. these mechanics of thinking about placing your buildings in certain yeah. positions, and that, that feels fun. Like I like that. That's my favorite kind of Sim City, eh? and not necessarily the Sim City to wall your opponent off, but the Sim City to get uh, powerful buffs or mm -hmm. have, uh, or like not get sniped. One of the things that I like the most about Zergs, for example, is how you you have to think about how to place your buildings because if you lose them. You completely lose all production of that unit yep. uh, compared to something like uh, uh, the, uh, a proxy gate or like how you can proxy gates, for example. Like I, I like the Sim City that is not necessarily uh, fucking with the enemy AI to create. Yeah, jokes, huh? and it's not going to make you win or lose. M yeah, most of the time, like in a pinch, like uh, as Protoss, you just have to wall. Like if you don't wall, you're just going to die to any like Ling Flood or Bane yeah, Bass exactly. or whatever. Absolutely. Whereas, and that's really punishing. Whereas, uh, yeah, there's 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 kind of more options and, and interactability with, with kind of Zerg. Like and, and this is now why Zerg like make their lair in the natural, right? Because it's less, it's harder yeah. for it to get sniped. When yeah, you get, exactly. When you Laying in the natural, having the natural things like in Age of Empires 4, uh, you have a uh, uh, wall placement. You think about how you place your various things. Uh, you put towers in crucial spots to defend the expansions. Uh, and all of those things feel really meaningful. For example, tower positioning is important because you have to think about the range of the units uh, and so on. You have, uh, yeah, Age of Empires 4 also has stuff like Habitat 2. Like, general buffs, eh? but there is, it just feels there. It feels like the same city there is more meaningful. We have to move on. There's a thing okay, of the schedule okay. okay, new I unit. Did... No, I was going to say one thing. Go. They've, they've changed the habitat, and it now has less HP, and it now has the light tag. Oh, yeah. That's okay. That, but... And all I'm going to say about that is, and because we'll talk about dogs later. Well, we can talk about dogs now. But all I'm going to say about that is, uh... dogs now do bonus, quite a lot bonus against light. They've made the habitat light. So if you wall with a habitat, you can just get it right clicked by dogs and it dies so fast. It is crazy. It's a. I don't know why they did it. I don't know why. I don't like I it. I agree. It, I agree. Uh, same problem with the Ornet, by the way. Uh, for uh, both EVB and uh, EEB. Uh, the Ornet also does, does like. I'm pretty sure. I think, I may, may, they might have rechanged that. Wait one second. We're going to see it later. Anyway, yeah. uh, Edge got with a visual update. They're a bit weird. I'm not sure if I like it. Imp's got a visual update. I really like it. Really, really well done on the design team for the Imp's. They look amazing. Perfect the way they are. Uh, new unit, Elborn. I'm going to talk about this mostly because our time don't think you have that much experience. I thought it was going to be insane. Uh, this was my biggest miss when I read the patch the first time. This unit is Garbago. Complete garbage. It's currently, in my opinion, the worst unit in the game, even worse than the Weaver, because I can see a, a, a position in which the Weaver is good, and I cannot see a position in which you want to spend 150 Ethereum and 5 supply for a unit that does very little damage. Now, let's talk about why this unit is bad very shortly. This is a very long-range unit that does a... It doesn't say it, but I think he has a splash attack, or at least the animation so, shows some splash. Yeah, it does a splash in like a triangle shape behind the unit behind that it the, hits. Behind the unit that it yeah. hits. So it's a cone-based um, splash. It's, the problem with the unit is that it just doesn't have enough damage and is not tanky either. It doesn't work as a siege unit because it doesn't actually create any pressure. And even worse, it can be converged and killed very quickly. Now, I don't have a problem with the converge, uh, converging and getting ki uh, killed quickly itself uh, because I think siege units should be able to kill fairly. They shouldn't be tanky. But I do have the problem with the fact that this unit does not create any significant pressure. I've had games where I had 10 of these things and they would do nothing. They couldn't even kill a Lancer. I think that's more on the Lancer, but uh, yeah, like... no, probably, probably more on the Lancer. It weirdly, it kind of works against the uh, in 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 Vanguard versus Inferno. It kind of works against the Infernal player because the splash does so little damage and it procs the uh, upgrade on the Lancers. So you end up just having all of your Lancers get activated, which is awesome, and then they just yeah. sprint forward. It's just not that tanky, and mostly I found that with the Hornet buff, I now just right click my Hornets onto all of the Hellborns, and. Um, and just you know, go through, kill them all off, and it's uh, yeah, it's not, it's not a great unit. It's it's slow and it's it weak. It's clunky, doesn't do much damage. Very clunky. The other thing, uh, I'm I'm gonna expand this uh, more when I talk about the Magmadon. This mm -hmm. unit is big and gets in the way a lot. Yeah. I'm gonna expand about my thoughts about 
this uh, later on. Yeah. For those who are interested. But what we said, the Magmadon, it. it's the same gas yeah. cost as a Magmadon, and it uses charges that the Magmadon would normally use. And you're normally yeah, gas it's... limited, in my experience playing Inferno. I'm normally stuck for gas. Yeah. I'm spending all my gas on on Magmadon, so when am I ever going to find space for a Hellborn, you know? I don't, I don't which also doesn't do anything compared to a magma. There is no situation in which I, I would like think about it. It's uh, I'm, I'm basically you can get a hellborn and uh, let's even do like let's be a bit more generous because it's 150 now. But let's be a hellborn and a brute. Do you think a hellborn and a brute are gonna be better than a magma? No, no, not in a million years. It's even more expensive. Uh, yeah. They require the same tech, they have the same uh, charge. There is no reason to ever get. Uh, uh, Elborns over Magmons, even when you stack them, they don't even work as a final uh, LCG units because LCG units usually tend to uh, snowball really hard once you have three, four, ten of them because uh, they start one shotting building and create a mm -hmm. lot of pressure. They don't even uh, uh, work properly. Yeah, you need to download it. Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, let's keep let's talk about the general changes. The, I don't have any, any problems with uh, the normalizing vision ranges. The walling change is interesting. I'm going to cut it short because I don't want to waste too much time on it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically easier to wall everywhere. Yeah. It is actually easier. Yeah. Like it, it's, uh, they wanted uh, to wall, uh, wall, walling to be easier than StarCraft and not as punishing. They didn't want to have the problem with StarCraft where to, you have to wall in a specific way, putting the pile in a specific way. I think yeah. they succeeded greatly. Good on them. This is really good on the game and good for new player. Well done. Okay. Yep. Let's but, talk um, about the real problematic stuff. Okay. So I think we can kind of gloss over creep changes. Don't affect much too much. They did some changes to the veterinary veterancy. No, I theory. actually wanted to talk about both creep and banger. I think those are both meta defining changes. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, I, the, vet, the veterancy I don't think is meta defining, does it? I disagree. Okay. We'll talk about it. Okay, start okay. with the creeps. So the creeps generally they've they've said really balanced. I think they're a lot weaker. They feel a lot weaker for the most part. Uh, and by weaker I mean easier depends. to kill and they do less damage to you. No, it depends. They are actually stronger. Uh, really? The reason why I know is because you used to be able to take uh, um, a resource camp with a brute, and now you can't. Now the brute got nerfed, okay. so there is also that. Mm -hmm. I think more or less the actual power level is the same. But uh, now this got changed. So we have uh, two different patches. We have the original patch and a new one that came out like one hour ago, not even. Yeah, I haven't seen that one uh, yet. So we'll get that to that at the end. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so creep stats have generally been rebalanced. This is a known problem. Creep scams generally gain slightly less problems as they level up. I think this is a good change. High level creep scams were really annoying to clear, and uh, you couldn't do it with a split army. You had to send a significant amount of your army, mm -hmm. and it just didn't feel worth it. It was very annoying. Health yeah. and speed camp now start at level 2 is also good. Siege camps now start at level 3 is really good. Creep camps now more greatly varying number of creeps. This was. The biggest mistake in this patch, in my opinion. The worst change ever. They already reverted it, at least somewhat. Uh, the reason why this is insanely problematic is because Infest works on Creep. Uh, what this means is, with the change to the gun that we're going to see later, that all games that you play as Infernal, especially Infernal versus Infernal, yep. were decided by who got Creep. Yep. All games... Listen to me, Monk. I'm not kidding. All games uh, in Infernal versus Infernal were mostly decided by the first fight with one brute, one gaunt at the one minute and thirty mark. I'm not joking. Ask anyone who's good at TV. Of course, insane players are always gonna be able to play. There is so much skill expression. You micro, you can micro, you can split, etc. But it felt terrible. If you ever lost the creep fight, the game felt incredibly doomed for a slight mistake at minute one. What? It so what I've been it, doing? In every matchup, but mostly Inferno vs. Inferno, is I... Because Inferno vs. Inferno, there's no scout, so my units don't even get harassed. The first thing I do is I send three workers to the middle of the map, and one builds a farm, one builds a turret, and one builds a conclave. So I have three conclave for gaunt production, I have a farm, which makes fell hogs, and then I have a turret, which gives me shroud, and I can take both camps in the middle of the map, and then That's normally bad, theirs, yeah. and normally mine. So I, no I end up with all of the camps on the map, I have total map control, and then I, I don't lose. That's I played that a bunch, and it, it it's worked a, a lot of the time. The okay, felt, yeah, help you yeah. yeah that, they do. That's bad because of the fellows. Uh, but uh, proxying, uh, the other problem is this has created an insane meta, which the only thing that matters is how quickly you can get mid. 
watch pro watch good games uh, people don't make the worker at the start the biggest infernal advantage was that they start with one worker extra you can make at the start they don't because you want to get your iron bolt in your conclave without making a single worker because the timing of hitting mid and getting that for the first two fins uh, snowballs incredibly hard you cannot make it I, I lost 10 games in a row you can check my match history to people just getting the conclave slightly faster getting there killing the creep before i could get there having two fins and that's it the game is over it is one of the most frustrating experience I've ever found. Inferno versus Inferno has been a problematic matchup in all three patches that I played. For context, I started playing in the, the patch where Inferno was uh, uh, introduced. But I think the patch in the middle was probably, quote-unquote, the best one, with the exception of Proxy, actually, so really problematic there. But outside of Proxy, like, the actual macro game felt fresh, and the interaction felt decent, even though it was a bit boring. It was boring, but not that frustrating. It was just magma on Brute Spam and a bit of Gones. Now the matchup is hell. I hope the new changes to Crips that just came in will do something to change it, but honestly, I'm not so sure. The other problem you have to consider is that uh, killing creep generates animus, which snowballs the game even harder. And yep. you can get so much animus. And they, well, yeah. they already nerfed the thing that was so problematic, but... I think we okay. should... Let, let's talk about this patch, and then at the end, we'll get to the new changes and talk about those kind of separately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But Since you are talking about... If you did a full clear, right? If you did all of the creeps on the map, you'd have enough... Animus to use one of the new abilities, which is to reset the charges on one of your production structures, and that that was crazy. Okay, for the Vanguard thing, I just wanted to to point out to point uh, this out. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not think it's a crazy buff, huh? but I think it's way more significant than we realize. Like in games, I've noticed it nonstop. I've seen Marines get level three after like two fights. Huh? I'm like, wait, that Marines. Double their hell that they're supposed to have. There's so much damage. I've noticed it a lot, actually. And this I've noticed uh, playing Inferno versus Vanguard, when I when their dogs, if their dogs kill, like, not even that much stuff, they can get a level 2 dog. Or, I guess, yeah, level up to level 1. It starts at level 0. So it becomes a level 1 dog. And then, I like, I can't kill it. Because one dog will already 1v1 a Gaunt. And then I end up with, like unkillable dogs that I just lose the game to like two dogs just from them getting kind of lucky catching a Gorn out of position it, it really snowballs I don't think it's a bad change I think that's mostly on me trying to cheese and rush Gorns to the middle of the map but... I, I do think it's I, I do think it I, I think it's both a, a good and a bad uh, change okay. I would like them to rework veterancy in a way that scales a bit up uh, with the game I think in the late game veterancy makes a lot more sense having mm -hmm. more powerful units yeah because the fights are bigger yeah, but, but, but maybe cheesing to a really early, unit. like, early unit gives it too much power yeah. getting veterans. Yeah, in. having, yeah, having a level 3 units after two fights, uh, like, five minutes, uh, and the, you, when you have five units total, like, the guy has five marines, uh, and two of them are level 3, you're like, what? Like, just, it just it just feels <laughs> weird, especially with units that are hard to catch, uh, such as, uh, egg, uh, I call them marines, such as Exos, Exos, uh, Lancers. Uh, have Lancers you ever fought and, against a level and, 3 and, Vulcan? Yes, it, it just does not die. They just never die. And you're like, oh, cool. It's, I'm losing like, the game to one unit. Like, it, it makes single units almost impossible to kill. The other problem is that it, it quote-unquote, heals them. So if they have 10 HP left and they gain 20 on veterans, they gain them immediately and go immediately up to 30. Yep. It, so it, it, I, it's so frustrating. Uh, I don't mind veterans. I don't think this breaks the game. But I do think it's... Um, it's it, it, it is very impactful. Yeah. Which, Understandable. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Orbital cooldowns. Your turn to talk about this. Oh, I don't know if I want to. Okay, deploy sensor drone is um, a little bit like scan from StarCraft 2, but the drone hangs around a lot longer. I don't mind it. It tends not to be a great use of energy, but there are times that I'm thinking like, oh, I wonder what he's up to, and then I can send a drone. What I will say is, unlike uh, scan in StarCraft 2, you know, you're like uh, sneaking some tech in the back of your base. You're playing like two base muter, but you want him to think it's two base roach. And then he's like, oh, I wonder what the Zerg is up to. And you scan, sees the sees the spire. You're like, great. Okay, that was a great use of, uh, of time and money. This drone flies across the map and can actually be killed by uh, units that shoot air. So it genuinely does tend to get caught by Gaunt. Um, if it's hanging around one of their expansions, they can clear it with a turret or with a with a gaunt. So it's not like a, it's not it's got counterplay. I don't mind it. It's not super impactful. Um, I think it's important and good. Don't mind it. His the first problem I have with these new orbital cooldowns, Bob overcharge is insane. 
It's so good. And I say that as a Vanguard player. Here's the thing now. You have to overcharge at the start of the game because they've increased the build speed for overcharged bobs. So if you are a virgin Vanguard player and you pull two workers to build a barracks, it's slower than the Chad Vanguard player who just overcharged all of his bobs and then pulled one and made the barracks. It's slower to pull more than one worker to make something. Yeah, they, they really did not think that through, I think. I think that change is... Apart from that it's really overpowered at the start of the game, I think the change is fine. I think there were many times where you would overcharge your bobs and then they would just like not do anything. They were just kind of, you know, they were stronger, but they weren't that helpful. Uh, yeah. Whereas I now you can at least build a, a bunker and you can like, you can react more. What do you I think? do have a bit of a problem with it. Uh, the reason for that, I have two problems with this change. Mm -hmm. uh, with the, the build time change, a... yeah. Yes, the first one is that I I think already so much power of uh, Vanguard was put into overcharge, which felt uh, as let's be honest, it felt like a get out of free jail. Yeah, card. and it feels and more a like a crutch. One, a crutch, yeah. a necessary crutch because otherwise the the more can get snapped. Yeah. The problem is uh, it so much power is shifted into this one ability, and to have even more power shifted into it, uh, fear ship. Yeah. The second problem that I have is that now. Get, killing Vanguard can be extremely hard. Yeah. Just because of the um, uh, insane, like even like okay, Vanguard already works around the fact that you have you start with a scout, mm -hmm. so you get complete information that your opponent cannot deny no matter what. I think I'm a bit. It. I think it's a good thing actually. I think the scout should be slower. I don't like the changes to the scout, but we're gonna talk about that. Okay. Uh, and I, w I wish Infernal something similar. Just start with a Shadow Fin, for example. Yeah, or I think some that's kind okay. Of other, like, I, I think I really maybe don't know why that's you start with a Shadow Flyer, but it can't attack until you make a Spire, let's say. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. Like, I'm sure you guys can figure something out. Um, like It doesn't really have to be anything elegant or too deep. Uh, it just playing badly, especially in Infernal versus Infernal, once again, for all of the uh, snowballing uh, reason, was terrible, and it created the problem of three racks, uh, proxy three racks in the previous patch. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first problem that I have. Like, like, having that, just already having that amount to scout, and then getting the ability to, to, to build a turret so quickly by just pulling every worker, and you cannot even punish it because the overcharged worker are also tankier. Yes. So you cannot kill the workers. They're, they're, they're not, like, oh, they're not yeah. tankier. They're not tankier. They are unkillable. They are insane. I had a game. I had 10 upgraded lancers in an opponent's mineral line. He has, like, two exos and two lancers. I'm like, cool. I, uh, I let my... I saw my lancers, I just aim move them, they'll do whatever they want. He'll probably overcharge the bobs and pull them, I'll kill the bobs and I'll kill his army. I'm going home to macro, I'm going to, you know, that fight is won, I don't have to worry about it. I look back, he hasn't lost a single worker, I have two lancers left, and I'm like, how is this, how am I meant to ever punish this, you know? You, you just run in, they overcharge the bobs, okay, I have to run away, you know? Yes. It's like, you what see the ability, you're like, okay, thank you, have a nice day, bye. And that's it. So, M Monk has... Uh talked about skill, binary skill checks this is a, like the perfect example of a binary skill check if i ever try if i ever try to harass you there is no skill expression on your part either than overcharging and pulling your workers if you overcharge you are fine it's impossible to kill outside of interaction with stuff like uh, imps uh, flaming imps and stuff like just and, and, and things like that. If you don't overcharge all of your mineral workers die, and if it's like go and drop, you lose also lose the game. Yeah. It, that this is literally binary. There is yeah. nothing else. There is no worker micro. There is no going to another base. It's literally I, overcharge or not. And there's no choice. There's no reason to ever click a different button in in most situations. It's that exactly. button. It's the overcharge button. It's it's strong. Example, it, it needs to be, but at the moment it's way overtuned, and it makes the game yeah. really dumb from both perspectives. It's dumb to be attacking. Yeah. It's, it's, so it's 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 dumb for Vanguard playing against Vanguards, and it's dumb for. Inferno's playing as my cards. So, uh, I think this is what I had to say about... Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that um, uh, I don't like the abilities in general. I don't like how many there are. I, can, I will make a better point when we talk about yeah. the, the full things yeah, of the game. because but there's only one more that we need to talk about for um, Vanguard. For Vanguard. Let's talk about Shields Up. Okay. Now... Let's no, stop, 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 stop. Let me let me read it first. Okay. 
Place a shield on a friendly unit that absorbs 1000 damage over 10 seconds. Cooldown 120 seconds, use it once every 2 minutes. Costs 25 orbital energy, for reference you max out 100 orbital energy. Um, overcharge costs 25, scout drone costs 25, this costs 25. Listen, this requires tier 2 command center. I told Lorembo at the time when this came out, I said this is bad. A thousand damage over 10 seconds is too strong. But I said it's irrelevant because the only time that it would ever come up, the only time it would ever be meaningful is when you would need... is when you have like one unit that's really strong and really overpowered and it's and it's and you need it in a pinch. What I will say, in late game fights, you put it on one unit you don't even know where that unit goes. It just like wanders off into the fight. I never see it again. I'm, like he can't die for ten seconds, but who knows what it is? I stick it on a lancer or a, or a Vulcan, and that's how it. That's how I envisioned it being used. And I said this doesn't matter. Now, can I can I explain why it's a problem? Yeah, before sure. you before you start. Okay, okay. <laughs> it's a problem because of a scout. A, a scout. A problem because of the unit we need to talk about later, which is the Hornet. When they nerfed cars, they decided that Vanguard needs a new good unit, and they picked the plane. The Hornet is insane, and it doesn't require a barracks, but it does require tier 2 command center, which means you get across the map with one plane that does a trillion DPS, it's not very tanky, until, oh, he put shields up on it, it, deal it, it absorbs a thousand damage for ten seconds, it's unkillable, and it can get across the map about three and a half minutes, minutes into the game. And, uh, and then you just ah! lose. And then you just lose. But, okay, so here's what I say. It's, this ability is stupid. I don't like it. I, I didn't see any point in having it in the game before. Now it needs to be gone from the game because this is stupid. And it's only because no, no. they made the Hornet too overpowered. No, I disagree. It's even worse than that. This unit has so much more bullshit potential that you don't realize. So the, the reason why this... Okay. Why why does Lorimbo have problem with such an ability? First to chip, 25 energy is nothing. Compare it to, for example, to the cost of using a scan. Like, like the utility is not even comparable. Like, not even on the same plane of existence. But more importantly, more importantly, the problem with this is that this makes a RAS unpunishable. You, if you send a Hornet in a fucking mineral line, I cannot deal with it i cannot do anything because the hornet is invincible for a thousand years and that's insane dps is gonna watch a hornet by the way can kill five towers in those 10 seconds yeah makes six makes six makes six towers but but that's not even that it snowballs incredibly hard in small fights the thing you have to realize is that the game in the way they currently is getting here too is not it is pretty expensive, but you can get it when you usually have like, what 10 units, maybe not even most likely 10 army units, 10 army units, more or less. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. A bit more, a bit less, depending on the game, of course, how much you're trading. If yeah. you're, all, all the all cases, are yeah, right. your opener, yeah, because putting one of them in invincible forces your opponent to micro very careful about it, especially if it's a lancer with the upgrade that they can then kill you, slaughter your whole army. To, due to the passive getting things like, like you can do so much things with it huh? it has insane potential and it's like there is very little counterplay from the opponent because if you say oh you can just ignore the unit then you're running one that you have to fight against the aggro which means that every single unit you have to manually like you have to, you have manually... to say don't don't focus that one unit that, it, that, that is that running you down one and one. cutting your head off yeah kill the yeah. other lancer yeah kill, kill the other lancer like if you ever played age of empires 4 uh, cavalry versus archer where the archer keep shooting at the fucking cavalry doing zero damage it feels exactly like that uh but also it's it's very as, as, as art said i put it in a big fight i don't even know where this is neither do i i can't fight like <laughs> I lost 1,000 DPS, 1,000 damage in a fight because my opponent did a random unit I did not notice and all of my units were attacking it. It's yeah. Yeah, it's also, not... It's also, not it's you can so send dumb. a Hornet, you can send a Lancer, you can send a, a fucking uh, Vulcan in a mineral line with it on. That's it. Like, your opponent yeah. is forced to evacuate the entire fucking Yeah, you should, over, you should overcharge your imps. What's wrong with that? Like, yeah. it's worth... 
it's forced to, 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 to evacuate the entire block because that one Vulcan is gonna slaughter your mineral line and you can't do anything. You could have your whole army there and the Vulcan is just gonna destroy your whole army too. Ah! One of yeah. them, okay. I, I call good. this day one. Hart can confirm that my reaction no, was you exactly did. You the did. You when did. I read that. For the season, I was absolutely right. Uh, fuck this ability. Actually, okay. okay. We're nearly an hour in, so we've got to pick up the pace a little bit. But I think we've covered okay. mo like some of the problems that we're having in general yeah. already in a broad okay. way. Lancer build yeah. time decreased. Listen, Lancers are too strong, but three seconds less build time, it, not that not that big of a deal. I completely, I, I completely agree. I like the okay. change to the Lancer. I think Lancer need to be gutted. Let's talk about it really quickly. Lancers yeah, are fine. currently yeah. the most overpowered unit in the game. No doubt about it. Because they, uh, well, after, like, now that they removed the Hornet and the Gaunt, they yeah. didn't have them. Yeah. It was, the... Orne it was Hornet, Gaunt, or Gaunt, Hornet, depending on which faction you play, you like, you like <laughs> yeah. to balance one the most. Yeah. And then Lancer straight after. Yeah. The three most broken units in the game. The Lancer is insane, especially with the upgrade. Why? Why did you put a unit that, that, that gets minus three damage from everything against a race that does six damage at most, uh, except with fucking Brutes, uh, and then it gets more powerful up to 100% movement speed and attack speed uh, on a unit? I've had Lancer run me down. I had like 20 guns against two Lancer, and the Lancer fucking run me down. They start yeah. running at towards me, they slaughter my yeah. army, and then I get told the skill issue because you didn't have Magmadons there. Ah! <laughs> I'm looking at a fight and it's like uh, 10 Gorns against 4 Lancers. I'm like, ah, oh, this can't end well. And then the Lancer player just uh, does a little bit of stutter step, destroys them. Yeah, also, it, it, there is a bit of a silly unit. Yeah, they, they can kite brutes. brutes. Yeah, yeah. They can kite Brutes, they can kite uh, Fins, they can kite almost everything in the game because of their hard range. But the biggest problem is that they are a unit that scales insanely well. They're a yeah. basic unit that's good at early game, mid game, yep. late game. It only becomes better. There is no reason to not be massing Lancer at every step of the way. They are insane tanks. And with the upgrade, they also do insane DPS. And the movement speed is such a problem because it completely prevents your opponent from escaping. This yeah. is a general it, problem with it, It's like if you had charge lot, you did a charge lot opener, except that you wanted charge lots for the rest of the games, the rest of the game, because they were as good as carriers. It's like, why would I, like, I can, I can rush out charge lots and then keep charge lots and I'll just play charge lots until the end of the game. There's no reason to ever, like, not play them. Uh, our producer says, Zest moment, you're wrong, because Zest famously doesn't get charge and he yeah. would not be good at Stormgate. Yeah. Zest, okay. Zest famously gets uh, gets the void respeed. <laughs> I keep saying we got to go quicker, and we did three minutes on uh, on the Lancer, which is not bad. We got to talk about the Scout now, and they've changed the Scout a bit. Yeah. So the Scout build time has gone down slightly. Movement speed has gone up, so it's now faster than a fiend. Now, I like the change. It should be faster than a fiend. No, but no, 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 no. It's relative. I said it needs to be faster than a fiend. Just make fiends slower. I completely disagree. I don't uh, see how you I, can. I think, they should have the, I think they should have the same speed. Precisely. The reason for that is uh, you want to avoid the situation which is bullshit, where you get a brute, split it, and kill the scout. Yeah, That's no, oh, yeah, okay, agree. That, that should not happen. Yeah. But you also don't want the situation where uh, the, the scout... Uh, is as insane speed, they can scout the whole map easily, can get the flowers. That's, the other thing is it's very hard to punish because of the, the healing flower. So even if you get damage on the scout, you can get, just get a healing flower because it's so quick and come back to harass you again. The harassment is not that big of a problem. I never lost a single worker to it, so they did a good job on that. Yep. But massing dogs is extremely strong. Yep. In Vanga Bertun Vanga, uh, especially because of the upgrades. Kind of. So the upgrade changes. They've made it. They've reduced some of the damage. So it used to spawn with six damage with six bonus to light, and now just has eight damage flat. So essentially, versus light units, it does four less damage. Versus all other units, it does two more. The two more damage to me doesn't really matter much. The upgrade is now twenty five twenty five. Takes thirty seconds to research, and it makes it do plus sixteen damage against light. Now the patch notes say light to units. It also does bonus against light buildings like the habitat. So you basically get bane busted, but by zerglings if you have a habitat anywhere, which feels terrible. The only saving thing here is that lancers are not light units. So now. Vanguard versus Vanguard is mass Lancer instead of mass Dog. Because if you Counter make dogs, the then you lose to Lancers. Yeah. So Counter the OP with the OP. 
it's very dumb. Then the next upgrade is um, requires the tier two command center upgrade, the central command upgrade. I've never and seen anyone get it. No, it, it, this is cheap and it doesn't take long to research, but it reduces um, biological movement speed by twenty five percent on hit. No one really uses it. That they used to be the other way around, and you would get the movement speed thing first, and then the bonus damage second. Um, but now, just nobody gets the gets the slow. Um, Vanguard is often still dog versus dog, um, and I don't love it. But yeah, it, it I don't know. They yeah, they haven't done great on that one. Okay, uh, EXO. Yeah. I like the changes. Cost increase is good because of the buffs. Of course, mm -hmm. the EXO was a bit underpowered even. Uh, even more, no, just a bit under power. I think now it's fine. Uh, the weapon range I am not a biggest fan of. Uh, the reason for that is that it was already pretty hard to reach it uh, with anything, and it now feels even harder. And this yep. interacts really badly with the veterancy problem they talked about before, mm -hmm. and even worse uh, with the Lancer problem because you can never fucking get past the Lancer and actually reach the EXO. Yep. I like the damage increase, I don't like love the range increase. Uh, I wish there was another way. I really wish there should be... I yeah, really like the first variation of them. They could uh, maybe buff the upgrade and give them more move speed, less range or something, and then there would be more micro involved instead of just, like, they just are further yeah, away. Yeah, but then Don't know. infinity kiting is always not fun, so... Yeah. I think the biggest problem with that is honestly the fin nerf, but, but we're going to get it uh, later okay. on. In any Bad case... Tech. The EXO is now viable because uh, Global Infest, which we'll talk about later, is, is changed, and that, that yeah. is why you're seeing them, which is good. That was a good change. Global, also, the Lancer is really good for us, a frontliner. Yep. They, they, they do pretty good, good damage now. Yep. Uh, uh, bad tech, bot version of Nanosword no longer stuck with, actually, with other instances of Nanosword. Yep. This was honestly necessary. The meta was insanely overpowered, but I think it was just not really thought of. Uh, it was just I think they just didn't realize how broken it could be to stack uh, yeah. Nanoswarm. So, so the Nanoswarm uh, is, is healing on your units and damage on their units. Most of the time you wanted it on your units for yeah. spam healing. But you just literally just spammed it on your front line of Lancers. And then because you didn't care if you hit like two or three on the same Lancer, they would just get healed three times as fast. So you ended up with a front line of just completely invincible Lancers. So it's slightly nerfed. It's probably still... Okay. Yeah, it's still, it still a problem. Has a pro yeah, it's still right. has a problem of okay, general problem of Vanguard as I said many times. There is a big issue with no bowling. Uh, it was like this uh, even before. Uh, it's like I, I think that I think this is the big one of the biggest problems of Stormgate. I know that nobody else has, seems to agree with me, at least in the development team. Uh, Vanguard uh, needs nerfing the mid to late game and these uh, severe buffs in the early game. Like the game cannot be yeah. balanced about either you kill the Vanguard or the Vanguard gets their invincible death ball uh, yeah. and rolls you over with mass Lancer, X or uh, Vulcan or whatever. Med yeah, and Lancer, Vulcan, Medtech, Hornet, uh, Exo. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah, I, I want to, I want my race to have units that scale well, that are further than the Gones, Brute, and Magma, don't, two of which got severely nerfed. Yep. Like right now, the only late game, good late game unit is the Magma don't. The Spring Guns are bad because of Hornets, of course. Even after the nerf, they're gonna be bad. The the Shadowfly are just anti air. The long range new unit is completely awful. Don't let get me started. We're talk, gonna talk about what I think about the Weaver, and that's about it. That's what we get. We, we don't okay. get. There is no progression. But now, now, okay. no, 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 no. Let's talk about what I, what, what affected me. As a car yeah. enjoyer, they have gutted Fuck cars. Off. They completely destroyed them. Now, I think. Let's, let, let me be clear. The cars needed to be changed because the previous meta was cars, and then in Vanguard versus Vanguard, it was just cars. It was just more cars versus cars. Always cars. The Hedgehog is interesting. You can think of it kind of like a Hellion. It was. It's a weird design, and I don't like the design. It does bonus versus heavy, so it's actually not that good against like workers, but it's really good against buildings. So there were times when the Infernal player would not have turrets set up, and you would right-click them with your hedgehogs, and they would explode and die. And it makes no sense, because it's like if Hellions ran in and started... Just like absolutely smashing your spine crawlers, it makes zero sense to me. They were really good in term if a harassment. They would scale well because they did bonus versus heavy, so they were good against magmadons. They were good against brutes. Weirdly, they were anti-air 
at, at tier one basically so you go barracks then factory then hedgehogs and you have anti-air already which meant that spriggans were even less viable now all of that said those are all the problems but they have gutted it let's just read the changes dispassionately i might edit some like really sad morose music in the background of this right cost increased by 25 luminite okay i'm not bothered Build time decreased by 5 seconds. Again, not really bothered. Movement speed decreased from 8, which was the fastest in the game, to 6.75. That's fair. That's okay. I'm over that. Yeah. yeah uh, because they <laughs> Let can we talk about the fact that they outsped literally yeah, everything that's what the fastest game, unit in the game means. what was supposed to counter <laughs> yeah. them. Like the fiends. They outsped the fiends. <laughs> they they everything. outsped the links. Why? <laughs> Why? Damage decrease from 10 plus 7 versus heavy to 10 plus 5 versus heavy. Again, the heavy chain, the heavy bonus damage is really weird to me. I don't really understand it. Um, but they've got rid of that. Now, those things are all, I'm like, okay, that's fair. Good, okay, yeah, good change, good change. Moving turn period increased from 0.18 to 0.4. It, it's this unbearable. This was I'm, terrible, yeah, yeah, this was so, terrible. These next changes don't mean much, but I'll explain how they actually affect the game. Ammo now recharges one missile at a time instead of four at a time. Mobilized ammo recharge duration decreased from four to 1.2. Um, listen, all this means is, basically, it used to used to drive around a bit, and then you would have a barrage of missiles. It would go like, do 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 shoot a bunch of missiles out. But this, then they would reload. But this meant that you weren't, kiting like you would kite marines right so start stepping marines you're like shoot 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 basically as often as you can this meant that there was a reload period where it was better to run away and then shoot all of your missiles and then kite again they've gotten rid of that now so every time they attack they just shoot one missile um and they feel more bland for it but to me the worst change out of this lot of changes is doubling the turn period it makes it feel so awful to control it's so sluggish if, if functionally the range is less against melee units because it takes so much longer to turn around you basically lose one range because of the units running towards you so pretty much in every way this unit is is it's not probably unplayable and i might try it and, and start making them again but it just feels bad to look to, to use it's just it just feels clunky, it feels slow, and I don't like it. And that's not a, a balance thing. Like, uh, you could make the damage way less, but have them feel okay, and I might still make them. The other changes, yeah. just to touch on those, really quick, really quick. Yeah. No longer attacks air while it's in car mode. I think this is good. It didn't make any sense for it to be anti-air, except that now you do need them to shoot air because of, uh, because of planes. Um, can now deploy without an upgrade. This is really good because the upgrade, nobody ever made it. It was pretty pointless. Um, and it basically, the upgrade turns them into like a kind of a turret. Um, they've now reduced the range. So the car range from six to five. The deployed range went from 30. So deployed is when it's in turret mode. Went from 13 to eight. 13 range was mental. It would be basically shooting you from across the map. It made zero sense. But now what they've done is they've made the upgrade, increase the um, anti-air range back to where it was before, and the anti-ground range now is one further than before. But these upgrades are like kind of out of the way. You need to make a machine lab to get them. So you have to go barracks, factory, machine lab, and then it's a lot more gas on top of that. So the gas expense to get, to get these upgrades, it, it takes a while. I think it's still viable and still usable. I think mostly because... You, because the anti-air in the really late game is really strong, having 13 range and it does a lot of damage for a really cheap unit is is very strong but in all other kind of ways, the car is um, the car is dead Okay uh, Was anything I said there, I just talked by myself for like two minutes, but was anything I said there unfair or untrue? It was more, it was more like five uh I the only thing that I will say about it is that Art has his opinion on it. I think the car is the most toxic was the most toxic unit in the game. It was terrible to play against. It, I think it was fun to play as, but very toxic. There sh never should be, and this is gonna be a recurring problem with the plane. Uh, 
uh, specifically, uh, the Reva should be a unit that outranges you, outspeeds you, and outdamages you. It was ridiculous. The only way Infernal could uh, um, deal with it was by turtling and then preparing one strong push, and that was it. You had complete map control for the whole game in the Infernal versus Vanguard matchup. There was nothing the Infernal player could do. They outsped Fiends, which were logically supposed to be the counter, since these were supposed to counter heavy units. They dealt well with almost everything except Goons, which is the only thing that really managed to rein them in. And... Uh, um, it was just a bad design. I think, I, as, as I, said, I said before, the Hedgehog is a unit that is badly designed. Uh, I don't think it will ever be non, non-toxic. non It's either too weak. When, when it's weak, it's terrible and feels terrible. And when it's strong, it's a monster machine that feels like it has very little counterplay. There was very little counterplay you could do. You could set up surround and stuff, but even then you have to remember that uh, storming it has still the problem of having very uh, non-open maps very corridor-like maps, which make it really hard to set up surrounds because you have to go around huge chunks of the map or you cannot split your army properly and there's always a new corridor in which your units can escape. It was also very problematic was the interaction with the healing turret, which allowed you to further extend control. The previous map also had that... Um, uh, uh, well, I call it a sensor tower, but it's a vision camp close to the yeah. bases, which allowed you to perfectly read the movement of the infernal player yeah. defending. Uh, or the vanguard player. It, it happened, yeah, it van- goes both ways. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm talking about BV, BVE. It yeah. was a terrible unit. Uh, I said it, in fact, I called this out even before the part. Like, I called this out in the very, in the the alpha before this, where cards were not good, but I played one game against them. I said, This unit has to go because if this unit is ever good, it's gonna be terrible for the meta game. Unfortunately, the design team did not think the same, but luckily now they uh right they they destroyed it. The turn, I don't don't like, I don't particularly like the uh, solution. Uh, it's not elegant, the turn it just feels terrible, and just, just, just a very unfun unit to play now. Uh, which, in my opinion, is the worst way of balancing a unit, making it almost unplayable or very uh, clunky. Uh, I honestly think this should be uh, removed or reworked, uh, rather as a different unit. Maybe anti-air units, the turret idea, there could be some ideas there. Uh, going on, because uh, you have to speed up slightly, yep. but can build the crime time degrees from 50 to 45 seconds. I don't have a problem with this. I think Vulcan with, where uh, they're pretty good at what they do. Uh, I think it's problematic with the interaction with other stuffs as, a be- as veterancy or um, or the shield, uh, but the Vulcan itself is not a meta-breaking unit. It's a good unit, but I'm fine with this. I okay. Think- Here's a change you didn't like, which is a bunch of changes to the Atlas. I'm not going to read them all, but they changed a bunch, yeah. and especially about how the missile flies and that sort of thing yes be honest with me how many atlases have you actually seen zero okay the atlas is completely outside of the meta i still don't like the changes though i think you're probably right and i think they'll start to be seen more often but there's not really any real reason to build atlases right now yeah because planes were let's be honest because they were better alternatives why and and vulcans are are, are probably stronger anyway yeah yeah, but why would you build a medivac with two atlases in it to a rust when you can build one paint that has the same DPS, uh, cost less, and, uh, and never gets hit by ground units as opposed to never gets sometimes hit, getting yeah, like, hit like, by ground units? Come on, it's 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 okay. It's, we're finally there. We're finally at the at the med, okay, at the I'm, I'm just gonna changes. say one thing. I'm just gonna say one thing about the atlas because okay. I, we didn't mention I did not like it. Uh, be really careful, boys. Monk. No, I'm kidding. Monk is gonna hate me. He's gonna think that I have a problem with it. I love you, Monk. I genuinely do. Uh, I just don't agree with some of the changes you you guys made. Monk is just a face, let's be honest. Okay. Uh, take a, de, Be really careful with the speed missile, the, the speed of the missile and the, and the radius changes, uh, even if you increase the period, because currently the most frustrating thing uh, ever in the in the old patch was uh, the Atlas with the Medivac. Inter- well, I'm calling it a Medivac. It's called a Meditech, I think. No, uh, Evac. Oh, EVAC. It doesn't heal, so it's just an EVAC, yeah. Yeah, it's an EVAC. Uh, the fact that you can you could kite forever with it was very frustrating, and uh, changing the speed of the missile makes it even harder to counterplay it. Uh, I also, we're going to talk about the EVAC changes later on, I guess. Too, yeah, which I let's, let's go to the plane. I mean, we talked about this, basically. We, uh, I, I'm not going to... We bitched the entire this. time. I'm not going to read it all. Okay, let's... D- there's a bunch of changes, a million different changes. The one that the changes that matter. It's does so much damage. 
It's insane. It does so much damage. It's so fast. You can stutter step it, everything. It, it it's just it's just so irritating. And here's my problem now. I'm gonna talk again for another five minutes. No. I'm gonna talk a little bit. Stormgate as a game has relatively de-emphasized air units. What, what I mean by that is most there's a lot of melee units in the game. So Brutes, Lancers, Magbadons, Scouts are all melee. Then there's relatively little anti-air, even on ranged stuff. So the Hellborn doesn't shoot up, the Atlas doesn't shoot up, the Lancer, no, not Lancer, the Vulcan, sorry, doesn't shoot up. Weirdly, Exos obviously shoot up, but weirdly, Medtechs shoot up. They do no damage, but they do shoot up. What this means is... And Gaunts shoot up, but Gaunts are actually pretty low DPS. And the six Hornet damage. is six damage. And the Hornet is not that squishy. It's 180 health. Worse though is that because they're air units, they can really abuse like the shape of the map and you know move where ground units can't. So even when they get caught by some Gaunts, you know, a Gaunt a number of Gaunts that they can't just straight up 1v1 in a fight or I don't know, 1v10 in a fight, they can run away to a different area and harass there. Now, they can also have pretty decent DPS against buildings, so even when Three there's... <laughs> they have crazy DPS against buildings, so even if there's turrets, there's areas where they can either fight the turrets if they're not done yet, or they can find areas where the turrets don't cover and then just kill your buildings there. So... Essentially, it's just uh, it's just overtuned in every possible way, and this whole like this whole chunk of changes on the patch notes just says that it's now overtuned. Yeah, so it's just overpowered. Uh, biggest problem: the insane DPS was the biggest problem. Uh, the health increase was problematic. Build time decrease was problematic. Uh, I, I'm not sure about the identity of these units. I like them more where they were anti air units. I don't like. I, I did not like the ability, the mine ability. I think the new one is better. But they also have a recall built in it. You forgot to mention yeah. that. Yeah. No, I, I was going to talk about that when we talked about the hangar bay. Because technically, that's a hangar bay. I mean, yeah. Okay, but they're, let's sure. They're they're insane. They're getting nerfed. Fuck yeah. hornets. Yeah. So. Evac. Oh, I, what I will say. Okay, really quickly. Just because yeah. I don't know if I said it yet. Previous meta was dog. Ages ago, Vanguard versus Vanguard was dog versus dog. Then it became dog versus dog into car versus car. Now you have to make hornets or you lose the game. That's it. Anyway, now we can move on. Planes. Evac. Brrr, brrr, planes. Anyway, Evac. I like this actually. Uh, okay, I have a problem with it, uh, but I double checked, and uh, it's not that much of a problem. It could have been worse. So uh, the thing is, uh, this this is. We have to think about the the identity of a, of a unit. The evac currently felt a bit boring. His biggest strength was basically abusing insane like stuff like Atlas drops and stuff, yeah, uh, or drops. Vulcans drop and stuff. Yep. But it wasn't it wasn't really used a, as an evac. It wasn't used to transport units. It wasn't really used to escape. It was mostly used to either infinitely kite with the help of the Atlas, uh, removing their biggest weakness, or just new uh, mineral land with a Vulcan. Yep. That was more or less the thing. I don't necessarily mind, and this is the part I like, turning them into a slightly more utility-based spellcaster, let's put it this way. But I do think that there is a problem with the current version of it. A design problem, not a balanced one. These are not powerful. Evacs are not better defining at all. The design problem that I have is that I find it really weird that a unit counter it counters its counter. What I mean by that is that against a Eva, uh, an Evac, uh, as an Inferno, but also as a Vanguard player, you're like, oh, okay, there is an Evac uh, flying around, killing my base, or killing my units. I'm going to get anti-air units such as, as the Shadow Flyer or the Hornet. Well, the planes are always good, but yeah. supposedly you will get the Hornet. For example, uh, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna counter it that way. That, that that's the way you do it in Starcraft. That's the way you do it in every other game. You get a Viking or something like that, a Void, a Phoenix, whatever. Scourge, a, a Scourge, etc. The Eva having the the mine ability. On one hand, it does create a little mini game, and luckily it doesn't one shot Shadow Flyer. 
which would be really, really dumb in my opinion. So at least they dodge that problem. But it does, like, it's just kind of weird design. It doesn't do anything. It's not overpowered because it doesn't want kill do anything, really. It's just weird design. Like, what's the point of it, making it escape easier? It's already pretty easy to escape due to high speed. The only thing that can kill is anti-air units that are also flying. So why would you re why would you go around the only counter and try to make it less counter? It makes it doesn't really make sense to me. Like I don't think the EVAC problem at the moment uh, is that uh, um, it, it was too easy to catch. I genuinely don't think that was ever a problem. In fact, I think it was uh, at one point they had to nerf both the EVAC and the Doombringer uh, because they were too quick. Uh. So just that's a weird design in my opinion. Do you have anything to say about this? No, except that we clearly love the sound of our own voices too much because we're we're burning time. Yeah, the next change is Sentinel. Okay, here's what I'll say for this one. Have you ever seen a Sentinel? No. Okay, we can move on. No, yeah. they've changed it a little bit, but it's still pretty irrelevant. I still haven't seen one. The funniest yeah, thing about this one is fixed a bug where the benefit from Nano Defense Bubble could stack. This meant that if you hit a unit, it would gain health because you just stacked it. So you have like actually completely invincible units, which was funny. Is now gone from the game. Good. Yeah, I mean, it's just it was just a bug though. Uh, habitat change. I think you already talked about. Yeah, we did light. that one out of the way. Yeah. Hangar bay cost reduce. <laughs> Return to hangar speed bonus. This is the recall I was referring to. Yeah. So it used to be twenty five percent bonus broken. move speed when it flew back to the hangar bay. Now it's a hundred percent bonus move speed. It's <laughs> just it's just a re it's just a recall. It's it you can rarely catch them. Like I caught I've caught planes recalling before, but it it's not it's not a great it's, change in my opinion. I mean it's to be honest, it's not meta breaking in my opinion, but yeah. I all, I I don't like the design. I don't think it should I don't think having recalls it, in the game God knows how much I hated that about zero space. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, no, just don't. Just don't. If it's I do worth it, it's noting. Get both, it should die. Yeah, it's worth noting as well that the recall heals it. When it gets back to the hangar, it heals the unit. Yeah. Uh, Badzo, Badzo Cannon. Range increase, bounce range increase from 4 to 5. This is an insane change, actually. This is by yeah. far the best turret in the game, not even closer. Yeah. Uh, it looks, uh, it didn't, doesn't look that big because it's just range increases. The big thing, in my opinion, is the bounce range. It's impossible to split units. Yeah. It's always gonna, the bounce range is so big, you can surround it, have like four different. Uh, uh, Gones attack it from four different angles and it's gonna hit all four. Yeah. It's ridiculous. So, so just to be clear, this is a when you put a Lancer in a bunker, it becomes a it's buzzsaw the Lancer cannon. turret, yes. Yep. Yeah, it's the Lancer turret. I don't have a problem with it, it's a bit overtuned, in my opinion. It's really, really strong, yeah, uh, especially yeah. with uh, the it's, it's not overtuned by itself, it's the, it's the problematic interaction with mass repair plus overcharge and, yeah. and so on, and the, the depot thing and so on. The next one is quick. Uh, this is the change to when you put a scout in a bunker. It makes the vision bigger and allows no one it to see ever clips. Used Pretty no irrelevant. One has ever used it. It's no actually one has ever used it. it's actually better to have the dog out of the bunker because it gives the uh, like the radius with the like a sensor tower radius, um, and that's fine. And then you can put something else in the something good in the bunker. Oh, also, since since now we, we I forgot to talk about it. We now we we, we got a lot of time back uh, on the schedule because we we're going too quickly. Uh, yeah. Why why the owl on the scout? That's just being used to BM right now. Just so you know, I just want you guys to be aware. It's completely useless. They just do it to BM now. I just want you to know. I don't know if it was intentional to make it a BM mechanic, but it is a BM mechanic now. Just saying it. Anyway, I love I love the owl. On. I love the I love dog, the I love the how. Yeah, this, this change is big, yeah. Flat cannon was when you put an exo in a bunker. Um, it used to do 24 damage at 12 range, so it would just nuke from, like, outer, outer <laughs> orbit. Uh, now 12 range is a lot. Yeah. Now it's it's uh, yeah, it's nearly as much as a, a upgraded sieged uh, car. Yeah. Uh, now it's 19 damage, so 5 less and 2 less range. I, I think the, the, the change feels noticeable, for sure. Yeah, I think it's good because this was uh, like 
there basically there was no other op you always got went for the flag cannon yep. i think now you always go for the bad so ca bad so cannon so i think it's a bit uh and the sentry are in the the other one is they're all useless so I, there is I'm a, not gonna, bit, a big i'm design. not gonna agree with you the med station which is the next change um they've buffed it so now basically out of combat which is basically always that you're using the turret uh, it's, it's, it's when you put a medtech in a bunker, it now heals 8 health per second. This is actually really good. And I, that's because a lot of early game openers are now... Um, Lancer openers, you send the Lancers to contest map control from the Infernal player. They come back, you obviously want to keep as many of them alive because of veterancy and because then they don't give a fiend to the Infernal player. Getting a fast medtech out allows you to heal all, those all of the Lancers, which as established are probably a bit too strong, um, and keeps them in the game. This is actually a, a, a really good turret and the change is very impactful. I think it's not overpowered, I think it's probably pretty fair. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, med, uh, med station you talked about. Yeah. Okay, now it's time to talk about Infernals. Yeah, Infernals. Okay, Tech 3 that worked. Oh boy, baby, wake up! New Tech 3 just <laughs> dropped. They do it every time. I get so annoyed. It takes me 10 games to learn the new Tech 3. Okay, whatever, I don't mind it. It's not important, it's just annoying. Stop the second change is, uh, is the one. White Health, White Health no longer degenerates off of Shout. Thank you, guys. This was a step in the right direction. I And Infernal units now generally have 25% of health as white health instead of 50. I think this was a really good change. The reason for it is that it allows both to prevent the problem that was uh, in the first alpha, uh, the third, actually. I mean, the, the Infernal one. We're just going to call the Infernal Alpha. Yep. The first Infernal Alpha, which was that it was so convenient of just stacking your units on creep, letting them regenerate its white health and just go all in. It was so strong. Units with 50% extra health, extra health it was insane. Um, especially in Infernal versus Infernal, you would split the brute on creep to regenerate. It, it was a bunch of mess. I like it. I like the solution. The previous solution of the generates of Shout felt terrible because it encouraged camping. You would never go out because your units were bleeding health. Yeah. Uh, this solution is more elegant. It allows you both to have an advantage of staying on the creep, regeneration and stuff. Keep that advantage a bit, 25% of creep, but without bleeding out completely. I think it's good. It also yep. disintensifies stuff like um, parade pushing because the new units are going to be weaker. Yep. So they are not going to have... Uh, they're not going to have... Not feel anyway. quite health. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so that, 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 that was completely fine. I think it's one of the better changes that they made. I really yeah, like it. for sure. And then nothing so, the health, the total health as well. So they now only have 25% white, white health as opposed to 50%. Is, yeah, I said. I said yeah, that. very fair. Yep. Okay. Rituals. I hate rituals. Uh, so these I used to be on the like... turret, and you used yes. to have to select the turret to cast them. Now they're on the top bar, which is relatively better. No, it's worse. Way worse. <laughs> In my opinion, it's way worse. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's talk about rituals. Uh, let, let's talk about why they're problematic. So. How do I start? First off, I think I, I wonder if they got inspired by Zero Space, huh? but I will make a comparison with Zero Space because I think that's the closest game that we have, uh, either that or the Spear of Adun. But the Spear of Adun is a campaign; it's not supposed to be balanced, so it's uh, doesn't really work. The Spear of Adun is a thing in uh, Legacy of the Void, the Starcraft 2 campaign, by the way, for those yep. who don't know. Uh, so I really dislike the way Rituals were made. I dislike them at first because I think that uh, sp global spells uh, in general are a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, and I dislike them even more because they are way too many and way too spammable. They feel insanely impactful. They were insanely impactful before. The previous iteration of, uh, of, uh, of rituals was overpowered due to one ritual. The other ones were all useless. Uh. All of them are useless except one. This is still the case, in, uh, somewhat, uh, at least. Uh. Uh, but better now. The the one that was OP was of course infest for the global infest was completely broken. Global instant infest. Yeah, so, so that's the first change then, on that list. Yeah, now the, the no, I want to talk about it generally. Then I'm gonna go okay, one okay, by one. Okay, okay. This is a big. You have to. This is the biggest change. For yeah. Example. Okay. Let's use use the so last the, half an hour on uh on the ritual. No, I'm not gonna use, I'm gonna use maximum ten minutes from now. Okay, I set not the timer. Even. Go. Not even. Okay. So, uh. 
biggest problem they are clunky they are too many six of them feels really hard to use they are a bit buggy i've reported several bug but those are going to be solved i do not like the way they work and they interact they are very hard to understand what how to use the uh, like all of them feels very niche or incredibly overpowered there is no middle ground i don't like I, i'm going to talk about the balance of each one of them i hate all of them i think they, there is only one that's good and is the all map covered in creep one i think that's the only one that feels clean uh, the reason why it worked in zero space in zero space eh, is because you had two basic units one of which was always a recall and then two more you two more uh, spells eh, that were only unlockable in the late game this is not the case in zero space you start we start you start with three spells eh, and you get um no you start with uh, two yeah, spells four. Eh, and you get four more no you start yeah, with two, two and then four, four yeah. more uh, at tier uh, when you reach once you reach tier four you can reach tier four reach, sorry tier two of the base you can reach tier two fairly quickly uh but the way with the meta with the way the meta is you never reach tier two so realistically you only have two spells uh and both of them feel feel uh, just just like crutches honestly like just annoying one of them is ipm sync which i hate uh the other one is just weird uh, weirdly interactable too it's not the, probably the war the the best one in a sense but still Okay, yep. let's talk about them now. Let's talk about how I ate each one of oh, them. Before, really quick, let me say, there's a fantastic game from the late 90s, I think. It came out just after Age of Empires 1. It's called Age of Mythology, and it has the top bar with the spells you get to use, like, one per game, and they're really impactful, they're really cool. I think that's where the top bar came from. And in that game, they're pretty cool. Um, so I don't hate top bar stuff. I think you hate top bar stuff. I don't hate top bar stuff. I, I will say... All I'm saying is, go play Age of Mythology. It's really good fun. I I really like the I really like the top bar stuff in uh, in uh, Zero Space actually. The okay. reason why I hate it in uh, in um, in uh, uh, in Stormgate is because it's too clunky. There are just six of them. There are too many. Okay. Uh, they're like the the way their balance is not good. Uh, the, the bugs are, are are not good either because okay. of the hotkey problems. And I liked it more when you need a Shawstone. And the, the shout mistakes were cool. Now you get them from the start, which has problematic interactions with stuff like the creep spawn, etc., 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 etc. I liked it more. They were like gated in a very specific way. You also got all of them immediately uh, because the thing is that you didn't have a, don't have a talent system here. So it's just like in, in zero space, they were gated like with talents and levels and stuff here. Yeah. They're not gated at all. Like, yeah, only it, by tiers. I, yeah. Like it does, I'm not, I don't think the, the, bar, the bar itself, the thing, I just like it more when it was an hot key that was easy to reach. Okay. Before, you could just click a button and then click one of your already hot keys. Now you need a new combination of hot keys. So before I could click 4 and click E. Yeah. To, to now you have to spell. click Control X or now, something. Now I have to, yeah, I have to click Control X, like, which is a more, this is why I dislike it in this game. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's talk about the actual changes. Let's talk about them from left to right. Because in the patch notes, they're in a weird order. So let's talk about them yeah. as they are in the game. Okay. So the first one is is a, is a new ritual, not a change on an old ritual. It's called Summon Effigy. Summons an yeah. effigy, which is basically like a bit of meat on a stick at the target location that provides Shroud, which is, you know, the, the area of smoke that gives uh, white health for 60 seconds. That costs you 10 Animus, which is not much. Cooldown 60 seconds, but it lasts 60 seconds. What I will say about this one that it doesn't say... The effigy has five HP. If you HP, one, if you one hit from basically anything, yeah, it it the, the sh it dies. The shroud goes oh, away. I'm pretty sure it is from anything. I think it work. is everything. Yeah. Yeah. So the I I think this is what the the more balanced one. I kind of like this. But I, mm -hmm. The reason why I don't like it is a bit too easy to snipe it. Yeah, I agree. Very, uh, also the 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 shroud. I'm not quite sure if the shout is affected by tier two, but it always feels like super slow. Like every single time I use, I feel like I have to wait 30 seconds before it has any effect. And if I use it in battle, it gets sniped very easily. But on paper, it works really nicely because your opponent gets to counter pre to snipe if you use it yeah. in battle. And then I, I but, think it's and nice. it also you're like it's not really impactful. You don't use it much when you gain a little bit of map control. You can place it and keep that map control, and I think that's no. nice. I think that's important. No, you can't. Uh, no, you can't because it uh, expires. No, you keep it for a minute. You don't keep it for the entire game. Yeah. Yeah, but it also like pre uh, forces you to stay there. Like it's way better to just bring a turret. Believe me. 
You don't no, you, you you don't use it like that. Though. Except that you have to bring the an imp all the way across the map. I, I I've used it outside people's bases, and I'm I'm you know waiting for yeah, that, Bob that's, overcharge that's, to finish. So then I put a, a an yeah, a, that, that, that's animus the down, that's and the then menu. I I heal up a little bit while I'm but, waiting for Bob overcharge to ro run off. Yeah, but that's basically the general. It's not really map control. That's what I'm saying. I'm stating like you don't okay, place fair. it uh, to prevent your opponent from going in a certain direction to have an no, advantage. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. they engage, no, you place it yeah. like to recharge your units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, for, for what you're talking about, then yeah, you you use a turret. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of cool. I think it's one of the better ones. Yeah. Let's talk about the one. I'm going to introduce this one. I hate this one. I also hate Health for Resurgence. Re 15 Animus. Zero second cooldown. Refreshes all charges on a target. Infernal Shrine, Iron Bolt, Kong, Lever, Twilight Spire. Get this out so, of the game. So those are all four of the production structures, including the main base, which only makes workers, is the Infernal Shrine. This is such a crutch. I hate this so much. I really this hate basically, it. It's worse than Inject. It's actually worse than Inject. This is both overpowered as fuck that to be nerfed and also insanely crutch. Like, you need this thing because your production sucks so fucking badly with the charge system that it, either you, you, it's so, it's so bad. Yeah, it's just it's really so dumb. bad. Everything sucks. It's an APM sync. The fact that there's zero cooldown means that basically you have to spam it and like then you have to like, then you have to, you also have to zoom on the, on the, on the thing. If this is the way you wanted to add skill to the infernal race, this is the completely wrong way to do, to go around yeah. it. This I'm is like... terrible to use. If it's terrible to be used against you when you see your opponent spawn six guns in one second, it's, ah, what out of this? It's a really silly, and also, as if it wasn't already silly enough, you can be up in workers, and then the uh, Infernal player can be like, oh, I need more workers, and then you just do it twice, oh, I've got six imps in instantly. I think this is not problematic against Vanguard, it could be balanced against Vanguard, but it's super problematic in Infernal versus it, Infernal, yeah. because it means that if you don't expand, you get Animus from the map, you also get more worker than the guy who fucking expanded, <laughs> yeah. because you are... Because you get Just because you went around and killed all of the camps, you can now use it instantly. So you yeah. have the bigger army and more work. I played a game against Mixo in which I opened CC first, he opened a double racks first, did not do a single damage, and the other three times my worker count by just killing them up and a bigger army. What? Who thought of this? Who thought of this? It's I very, just get very this silly. Out. It's Huff, also. Huff in in some other way, just kill this, please. please 15. Just, Animus is like nothing. It's so little. It's crazy. Okay. Anyway, so the next one along is Shadowfall, right? On the bar? Yeah. It, okay. No, that's the fourth one. It's uh, Bring Darkness. It's the infestation. I don't have a problem oh, yeah, with yeah, this. Uh, the three second is really weak. Okay, right now. let's talk about how it was because that's what most people are kind of aware of, I think. Maybe. It had a, a 10 seconds cooldown. Yep. It was global, it was yep. instant, and yep. it had a huge range. It was completely overpowered, it infested everything constantly, uh, could infest fiends. Uh, it was the most broken thing in the game. Yep. Uh, so the changes the are the cooldown is now two minutes, as you said, up from 10 seconds. The radius decreased from 10 to 6, so it's like nearly half the size, which is fantastic. Um, three second casting delay, so you now get some kind of warning, like where all of your stuff is about to be infested. It's not that bad, actually. Like, from my experience, you can use it kind of small. I kind of like it now. Like, I yeah. think it's way better than the previous version, but I still yeah. don't like the ability because I don't like infest at all. I hate the infest as well. Yeah, it's just free. Uh, but let's talk, we'll talk about that, I think, when we get to the gaunts or the fiends, probably. Yeah. yeah. The Shadowstone Manifestation is the next one. No, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Uh, this one uh, basically spawns a big tower in the range of another shine of a tower. Uh, it, for 30 seconds, the tower full is as four times the DPS because it's double damage and double attack speed. Mm -hmm. And it has a two minute cooldown. Uh, I don't like this. This is mostly used in cheese. Uh, when you're getting all in, uh, usually if you don't have enough units, uh, you die anyway. Uh, the problem is in Infernal versus Infernal, if you drop this, your opponent also drop his, uh, because you can use it on the enemy creep, so it's... Oh, I didn't even know that. I didn't know you could cast on other people's it doesn't, do okay. what it, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, because it's way too expensive uh, to use it as a defensive tool, and by the time you get that ma that amount of... Uh, of yeah, uh, it doesn't say how much animus. I think it's 75, 75 right? 75, 75. Right, so uh, I might as well just have spammed... Uh... Spam the reinforce. Yeah, yeah, and think about it this that. way. Even with the nerf, would you rather 
you have a single turret that does four times the damage while there are big army, or would you rather use L like the the refresh ability either three depending on the nerf or four times or five times actually with yep. the 15 cost, which allows you if you have the money, which is should have to get because guns are so cheap, you yep. get 15 guns. Would you rather have one turret or 15 guns? What do you think? It's it's just yeah. it is not good. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. It's most, but it's really good to when one in two base on lins while you're killing your opponent. Then you also spawn this in Infernal versus Infernal, and then it's really really hard to for your opponent it's, it, since you have the bigger army. You have more animals, so you can use it. And they can't. It's it doesn't work the way they wanted it. Get this out too. Uh, I like the. Shadowfall is really cool, actually. I thought it was useless, but it's just way more consistent than uh, than some on effigy. It allows yep. you to create to create a push to create have 30 seconds, which you really have a strong push. But it doesn't feel oppressive from my experience. It doesn't actually no. uh, because it, of the also, bank death almost. Yeah. It's a really cool effect and yeah. feels great from both sides, in my opinion. Like as the vanguard, you're like, oh, this is like real. The entire map is dark yeah. and smoky. And as the end, you're like, okay, cool. Now I've got like momentum. I can go, yo. Okay, dragon because we're out of the ten minutes. Oh yeah. Nobody likes the, nobody likes the dragon. I don't know why it's not like the tier three unit, but it's a spell. Uh, the animus cost decreases, kind of nice, but the problem is that it gets one shot by Ornet uh, or by Shadow Cars. Fiends. Uh, yeah. It's basically a skill check. If your opponent doesn't have anything, you get one very good fight, uh, but it also costs so much. It's just why? Just why? It's, I think one of the biggest problems with the dragon is it's really good if you, the vanguard has no anti-air. If they're just playing Lancer, Medtech, Vulcan, they can't shoot the dragon. The bad thing for the Infernal it. is they suddenly realize they have no anti-air and they immediately make two hangar bays and immediately start pumping hornets. And now they have anti-air and they have hornets, which you didn't even want them to have in the first place. Yeah, this, so this is the joke it actually that baits them into making yeah, better yeah, units. Yeah, this is the joke that I made. I said the Spriggans and Dragons are awful because not only are they bad units, but they also bait your opponent to making hornets, which are great units. So it's... Uh... It truly is the ultimate bait, uh, and that and that's it. That's what I, I hate those. Yep. I hope the spells need to be reworked deeply. Fellog, uh, health decrease, damage decrease. This is really, really good. Uh, fuck beat farm rushers. I don't care that it nerfs my race. This was toxic as fuck and needed to be removed. Be well done. I haven't seen a single meat farm rush in the entire game, so it yep. must have worked. Yeah, I think it's dead. Yep. Uh, Inflame now only activates on one unit if you have multiple imp selects. Holding down the hotkey will activate multiple times. This is the same change as Brute. Uh, I don't like it. I know what was made. It was made to prevent you from accidentally inflaming like 50 uh, Brutes. So 50 imps or splitting 50 brutes, but it also means that if you want to split 50 brutes, it takes forever because even holding it down is not that quick. Uh, just could okay. they fix this by putting it on two different hotkeys? You could have a yeah. hotkey for split one think. and a hotkey for split all. Yeah, the same I hotkey for flame one versus yeah. flame one all. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. The change isn't super impactful, and they haven't changed anything Brute. else about flame one. Cost increase from 100 to 150. Supply cost uh, increase from 2 to 3. Uh, I don't like this. And more importantly, they always drop two things on that, even if they didn't cast, uh, even if you didn't uh, uh, made it, make it manually. Uh, okay. I think this is the most uh, important change that we can talk about for the rest. I don't like this. I have the completely opposite opinion of Bonko in this. Uh, Monk says that the problem was that you had yeah, always 100% or 0%. Yeah, we can read that. I might just power read that post really quick because our producer yeah, prepped it. it. Let me read this really quick. This is from Frost Monk. This was on uh, Reddit, on the Stormgate Reddit a little while ago. He's replying to a comment which says, Really disappointed by the brute changes. Having to manually pop each brute to spawn fiends felt like one of the best mechanics in the game. Now, I would probably agree with that. Monk says... We made this change because the previous iteration of the brute slash fiend mechanic felt extremely binary. 100% benefit versus 0% benefit equals 100% difference. Due to how much of the brute's power was gated behind whether you could hit the Z button on time. He would say Z button because he's American. We found this approach to be extremely unfriendly to newer players, especially as a core mechanic on a tier 1 unit. Many playtesters internally could literally not play our game because the early game was balanced around this mechanical skill check. This is not the direction we want to head towards for an approachable game. Instead, we want the skill expression of this ability to be focused on the decision-making, i.e. when you decide to split your brutes, rather than if you can split them in time. 
we considered a few options to address this, including on death you gain one fiend, therefore he says 100% versus 50% benefit is therefore a 50% different. On death you gain two fiends, this is 100% benefit versus near 100% benefit is therefore a 0% difference versus splitting manually. We primarily went with the two fiend approach in order to push the boundaries and gauge both feedback and how games played out in this completely opposite direction. Note that you still want to manually split brutes versus vanguard to deny veterancy. I will say also to note here is you do want to manually split sp split brutes. That's not easy to say. Split brutes versus gaunts. This is my sidebar because then you deny a fiend spawn if you pop them yourself yeah. versus getting them killed. I don't think either solution is perfect yet. My current thinking is that there's probably an ideal percentage difference in the benefit you gain from the skill expression of hitting the button at this ideal level. If it's not an instant loss, if you don't engage with the mechanic, but you do feel a reward for showing off that skill. My gut is that the number is probably in the realm of 100% versus 80 to 90% or 10 to 20% difference. Obviously, you can't do that with discrete numbers of fiends, so we'd have to be a bit more creative with this solution. That's the, that's what he said. That's the entire quote. Nothing, yeah. no clip jumping, yeah. nothing. Uh, the only thing that you change is the brutes versus gold. We corrected that because it, it was, we said, he said the wrong thing. Huh? Uh, I, I'm sorry, Monk. Monk is gonna be so angry. He's gonna hate me. I love you, Monk. I love you. Please, I want the game to be good. Please, Monk. <laughs> Someone should just clip a compilation of me saying Monk. Poor Monk. He gets all the shit, bro. I'm sure there are like 25 designers behind him, maybe 20 times. And uh, but like, okay, anyway. Imagine being the one guy that people shout at on the internet. Yeah, he's the David Kim. Just, he's the David, yeah, I'm just Kim, David Kim. Kim. Yeah. I still, I still haven't forgiven uh, Monk for the void patch, actually. So. I think it was him. Anyway. More Monk slander. Monk, I, I understand what you mean. I completely agree. The game should be approachable to new players. And I understand that the problematic interaction with splitting made the game unapproachable for, for your developers. Now, if, you, if your developers cannot play the game, that's obviously really bad, huh? I will say. I, I could say skill issue, but I don't, I'm not going to say that because I don't think that developers should be good at their games. I just think that they should have good design ideas. So I agree with you with that. But the problem is, uh, you also remove, by doing this, uh, the, one of the few interesting units that, that Infernal has. You made it incredibly boring and you completely made the Brute lose its, its identity. The Brute has no identity anymore. I don't disagree with the reason why you did it, but I think you didn't achieve what you wanted to achieve. Because currently, the game is still gated behind that. If you play Infernal versus Impernal, splitting Brutes is crucial to deny, um, to deny infest facts. It didn't change. I understand that maybe it changes a bit in the early game against Vanguard, but specifically because of the interaction with Infest, and specifically because even against Vanguard, as I said before, the veterancy feels really problematic and stuff, and the identity of the Brute gets completely compromised. I think was, this was a, a terrible decision. So I don't think that the problem with the previous patch was the way the design of the Brute was. Or rather, that the problem that you mentioned about it being too crucial was made by the brute itself. I think you could have nerfed the brutes, you could have nerfed the fins, you could have nerfed the way they interacted. For example, you could have made so that fins don't spawn with white health, which would have made that really, really strong the last patch. Yeah. I Lily really Pad, don't think... Producer Lilypad says, could you just make them spawn damaged if it wasn't a manual split? That's another thing. I really 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 hate this variation of the brute brutes were my favorite units i have clips of me saying how much i like the design of the brute how it's an interesting unit that has so many choices you completely remove the choices you made the game more unfun for everyone because you thought it was unapproachable for some people i so think the game is boring now to me especially the, if, wait yeah, one sorry. second let me, go, let me go, 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 go. if you have a problem with how conclusive the split mechanic was, uh, that was a problem with how impactful tier 1 units are in this game and how well they scale. That is not a problem with the Brute itself, uh, in my opinion. I think it was exactly the same problem as the Lancer one, 
as the Ornet one, as the Exoveterancy one, how impactful it felt to lose small skirmishes. It was the same problem as the camp in the first Infernal Alpha. It was the same problem as the Infest versus Infest bullshit fights in the in the previous one. The problem is the problem with an approachability was not the brute splitting. Please, that was the only cool thing. I understand that it exacerbated the problem, but there was a core problem behind it. And I feel like you're missing, well, how do you say it? You're missing the forest for the tree. I think that's the yeah, saying. We say that. Yeah. Wow, I'm so good at the English. Ah, God gamer. Okay, Let's what I'll say is, to me, it feels a bit like Blink Stalkers, where if you have really sick Blink Stalker micro, you can do it infinitely and you'll never lose a stalker and they're you know, you get 300% efficiency maybe out of them. But then, even if you are in gold and you do a little bit of Blink Stalker micro, you feel like a legend and you still get some efficiency out of them. It felt great! It was so good! Yeah. Whereas now it's... So well designed! I, I, I don't even see people manually splitting them to do, like, fiend plays anymore. I just Mark, see... Well Whoever came There's up with the idea of a brute, critical. it's a race. It was a genius idea. It was a genius idea. It was great. It felt great to play. Why did you take it away from me? Why did you take away my brute? Okay, okay. that's the brute code. The fiend, this change is massive, and thank God. Fuck they, off. They decrease the damage slightly. That's not the massive one. The massive one is... Actually, there's two massive ones. Damn it. The massive first massive one is that it now Big only one. degenerates white health. So it used to gener degenerate off of Shroud until it died. It was a temporary unit, basically. Terrible. It felt terrible. Yeah, I didn't love the change. I mean, it, yeah. I think I like maybe it. now it could it could it could do with maybe a little bit more rebalancing. Because if you have one Fiend in your base, it's really irritating and hard to catch if you're a Vanguard player, but that's fine. Uh, the bigger change is that they're now immune to Infest. What we used to see in Infernal vs. Infernal is a load of Gaunt and Fiends running at uh, enemy Gaunt and Fiends, and then one player would Infest, and all the Fiends would turn into other coloured Fiends, and then the other player would Infest and turn all of those other Fiends back into the other coloured Fiends. And the whole thing is stupid. Plus like, that there was they, no cooldown on the infest. The whole thing was silly. This is the best change, but it also made this also ruined the uh, EVE. By the way, these are the unforeseen consequences uh, in allowing you to now play. Like now, the problem is that now you get the fins uh, from the camps and they counter the enemy going so well because they cannot be infested. Uh. Yeah. So now you have that problem that has to be, but that's a gone problem yeah, and a sure. camp problem, not. This change was good. Also, not in the patch notes. The fiend speed also got reduced from 7 to 6. Eh? Or 725 mm -hmm. to 625. Got removed, yeah. reduced by 1. I don't like this change. I think the damage nerf was fine. Uh, I think it feels really hard now to play around certain things. Uh, especially stuff like 7 range exos. Uh, I, I think I think the speed was the defining factor of the fiend. Just like the, the link. I think it should have been one of the fastest units in the game. I would much rather... Re reduce the damage again, mm -hmm. then uh, and have and them faster. Okay. I think I didn't think it was cool. Like I don't, I don't, I don't want it to be OP, but I want this identity to be similar to the link because that felt great. So mm -hmm. a decent DPS or a high DPS unit, okay. very quick that does very quickly. I okay. Don't want it I'll to agree with like that. It. Like that, 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 that's basically my idea of it. I don't hate the changes, but I do. I don't like the way they're going with uh, with the speed thing. Uh, Gold, most problematic unit in the game. Uh, infestion needs to be there. I could do a two-hour podcast on uh, on uh, on why infest should not have been in the game. Worst yep. mechanic ever. I hate it. I like the upgrade, but it just doesn't do much. Uh, not necessary at all. Uh, I don't know what to say. I don't even want to go too deep into this. Just I, I think just, just I think just put infest back on an upgrade. But I think they've already done a change that I don't yeah, know Yeah, but about, then so guns we'll are completely used. I, I think guns were perfect yeah. or close to perfect in the first alpha. I genuinely don't know why they changed that way. They made it, they made them because they had higher damage. They also resolved the problem with the Lancer. For example, they were like more similar to Exos. And I think now their new identity is complete garbage. It, it's either super, it feels super weak against Lancers or against, for example, a Magmadons or super strong when it snowballs. They're, Terrible. Terrible unit. I hate it. Uh, Magmadon, this was a cool change, actually. 
Uh, I, I thought I would hate it, but I kind of liked it. Less damage straight up. Uh, they removed the charge, but now he has like, uh, well, the, 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 the sacrificing uh, nearly phalogs or fins, you never use it really because you want it to be in the enemy territory. Uh, the only reason why, like on paper, this is a great change. I really like the, the trample ability. In reality, this feels terrible. The magma gets stuck everywhere. Uh, when it works, it's great. It's also super good. In, it's so good. Infernal versus Infernal, if it ever goes to the mid-game somehow, which happens maybe one game out of ten, mostly when one game is coping, one one Magmadons, the player who gets to Magmadons wins the game uh, because they're so impactful against enemy fiends. They can tank gods forever. That is mostly a problem with gods low damage. Uh, it just... It, like, it's a cool change in thing, but I think... Let's be honest, guys. It really shows some of the problems with your engine. Units getting stuck, going in the wrong direction. I have clips of my Magmadons staying behind uh, Gones, uh, trying to fight. Even though, like, the Gones did not completely cover a choke. The Magmadons part fighting just couldn't go around them. Yeah. It's really hard to split. Because, so, like, in StarCraft, quite often you want your, let's say, Marauders in the front and your marines in the back, or your roaches in the front, and your hydras in the back, and you can just control-click one of each unit, and then send them like that, do the crisscross, and they'll they'll figure it out. In this game, your gaunts are always in the front, and your magmadons are always somehow, like, just not where they're supposed to be. And the trample yeah. helps, because it pushes they, friendly units, but... Because go gaunts yeah. push, him, push them out, because they're, they're just terrible. And... Uh, I will notice it because I got so annoyed by this. I got so annoyed by this detail. When I played the Mongols watching me, he mentioned how I had used all of my tramples immediately while my ultras were still, like, my magma were still stuck. So I didn't get a lot of the damage. If I had used them sparingly, I would have won the fight. And then when I, comp and when I in a separate, not by Monk, by the way, it's not, in a separate instance, I've been told that units get stuck. I've been told to trample while they're behind so they can go through. So which one it is? Either you want trample to be the way you go through units or you want it to be the way you do damage because the ability is limited and you can't use it both ways. Either change the trample or fix the movement. Probably fix the movement, honestly. So yeah. But good changes. Great idea on paper. Great idea on paper, terrible feeling in reality. Shadow fire changes completely irrelevant. I did not notice any change. I'm gonna be honest, I literally could not think, tell you what changes. They do the same job very well. Nice. Uh, the health increase is only relevant because of the minds of the Evac. Uh, Doombringer, Doom, Doombringer is the dropship for. Uh, yeah, it's a dropship for, from. Uh, good changes. Uh, I like the fact that it comes from the Conclave again, and it requires uh, a greater, uh, like uh, a greater shine. Yeah, I think, it, I think it might still be a slightly too good in Inferno versus Inferno, but even in Inferno versus Vanga. But I think once again, it's not really the thing that's good. Is that the Gones are OP? Uh, Gones drop are OP because Gones are OP. Uh, Weaver. Still useless. I don't don't get me got this is the most weird unit. Remember, in the game. you don't understand it has 30 less health. This is a the big change. The 30 less health over 750. It can tank is the six most more gone auto attacks. That's like what? Wait, let me what is like two percent more uh, less health? Like what is this? Wait, uh, I can check really quickly. Be very... I'm a mathematician, by the way. You can tell uh, from me doing uh, this is uh, four percent less yeah. health. 4% less health, 30 out of 75. Uh, that's nothing. It's uh, the weirdest change ever. Uh, the... And this, the other change, the weirdest yeah. change ever. It now has like... zero auto attack damage, but it deals 5%, no, 10% of a unit's health, 5% of a structure's health. It never attacks. This thing is so slow. If it ever auto attacks, it's you buy a lottery ticket, you know? It, ah, it doesn't happen. Yeah. I think this has to be reworked. This the unit is currently one of the worst in game. Feels terrible, super clunky to use. I hate it. Uh, mid farm got increased and also slide, but this this is to mirror uh, the um, depot change. Mm -hmm. Shoutstone got slightly uh, nerfed in the damage, and slightly increased from the shout. I'm fine with that. Yep. This is mostly to fix Inferno versus Inferno. Well. Uh, in Shout so rushing was popular. Twilight Spired uh, now needs uh, Iron Bolt or Conclave, but 
this I think is a good change because it allows you to get uh, yeah uh, yeah do it and yeah, it yeah there are there are times where you have you no tier two and you need yeah. a spire yeah uh, mostly because of ornaments huh? let's yeah. be honest and and actually drops too so I think this is a fine change even though it yeah, takes forever to build one uh, shadow cleft and the ritual chamber they just detect three changes mentioned. I don't really have a problem with them. Uh, they... Yeah, this has the Magmadon upgrade. I think it's a good upgrade, I think. There's yeah, not good. ever really, really good. a reason to build a Ritual Chamber, as far as I can tell. I mean, the Reaper Rush ability on paper, and the, inf the Infuse ability is kind of good, but... Like, the... Sorry, the... The, the imp ability can be good, but... Oh, is... yeah, okay. In the late game, you need the imp ability. Yeah. Okay, we finished doing that. Yeah, we are already oh, okay. We're out of time. Two hours here. Okay. Uh, so, so now we need to work the new changes that just dropped like two minutes yeah. before we were starting recording. So I was setting up. I haven't seen these. So, yeah. Yeah. Some bug fixes, which is nice. And thank you, means a lot. <laughs> um, it, you know, the the whole point of playtesting is to find the bugs, right? It's the whole, the whole point is to, yeah, that's all say, you know, to not just like what, um, what we think is OP, but like what we think is, um, yeah, what actually breaks the game. Uh, performance issues, AI issues, that sort of thing. It's always good. Okay, I'm reading these for the first time. Hornet anti-ground damage decreased from... Yes, yeah, sorry. From 14 with seven with a bonus 7 against light, so 21 damage against light, to 10 flat. Thank, Thank God. God. <laughs> these things would destroy workers. They would eat workers. Doing 21 damage a shot. It was not like, I don't know, Three or four shots an imp, I think. Crazy. Thank you, God. Hedgehog turn rates decreased from 0.4 to 0.15. This is now less than they were in the first patch. Maybe it's cars are playable now. Oh, thank God. I hope not. But at least that's... I hope not, but it's a good change because this was not the way to kill them. Yeah. Like, this was not the way... Making them cancer to play was not the way to nerf them, in my opinion. So... Uh, yeah, deployed hedgehog weapon range increased from 8 to 10. Um, so now they have, with the upgrade, they have 15 anti-air range. Okay, I'll take it, whatever. I don't think that's super relevant. And deployed hedgehog recharge time decreased from 0.9 to 0.6. So again, these are for when it's in turret mode. Pretty irrelevant for the most part, but fine. They clearly have, there clearly is an issue that they're trying to address. I guess it's hornets. Uh, maybe it's dragon, but yeah. Those changes are fine. I might try hedgehogs again. We'll see. Yeah, air spawn resurgence animus cost increased from 15 to 25. This is a good change. I talk about uh, I think the ability should be reworked or removed, but whatever. Uh, gold cost increased from 50, 55 to 50, 15. This is also a bender fix. Uh, I don't think it resolves any of the current problem. It's probably make, gonna make gold weaker. At least, at least, I think this is good for Infernal versus Infernal. I think this might be really problematic for Infernal versus Vagar. Because it's already, as I said, I think if you ever get to the dead ball, it's over and it's incredibly cancer to play as the Infernal player. So I don't know if, like, nerfing, like, I think there are fundamental issues with the units that are not being addressed here, but I understand that these are small patches. It's a triple in cost, by the way. I hope that Infernal versus Yeah, Infernal triple gas cost. Now. So I think uh, now you'll need to put more workers to mine gas in order to keep up. With the gas mining, yeah, I think you need to put two or three instead of one because yeah. one was over, one was already overdoing. So I think two. Yeah, was well. two level one something. resource camp now spawns a level two spider instead of two level one spiders. This is good for Inferno versus Inferno, but also Inferno versus Vanguard. It rains back a bit the power of um, just the infinite. Uh, Fiend spawn. Uh, level 2 resource come now spawn 2. Level 2 spiders instead of 5 level 1 spider. This is also really good, but doesn't really affect too much because the, the, the speed comes that are still really problematic. Yeah. Uh, so you get 5 so fiends from every speed You get 5 fiends. So it's, all the other uh, resource comes level remain unchanged. So I think this abandoned fix uh, fixes some of the problems, some of the glaring issues. Thank God for the ornament nerfs. Uh, one base ornament was a thing, uh, by the way, in both matchups. We can now reveal this. Uh, hopefully, it's yeah. Not a so, thing so let's talk now about how we think the meta is going to change, and then who we think might win the Stormgate tournament that's coming up. So yeah, I think absolutely. I think one base hornet, hopefully, is dead. I, th yes, I think sir. with such a massive decrease in damage, it has to go. Rip and piece. Yeah, 
Rip Bozo. Um, El Bozo. I think a lot of the early Gaunt plays might be gone. I would expect more Brutes to come back, maybe. Um, oftentimes it was like double or triple Conclave opening. Um, I would expect now one Forge, one Conclave opening to be more likely. Thoughts? Yeah, I think I think one Forge, one Conclave are going to be more likely, but I think they were already better most of the times. So I don't actually think this is going to make as much of a difference as people think. I think this is most a nerf to the mid-game. The, um, the air spawn resurgence animus cost increase combined with the triple thing, which is you get significantly less gold in the mid-game. Uh, but that's... Uh, that's, uh, that, that, that's it, I think, uh, Orton. We okay. just have the prediction. I think, so, uh, yeah, I think yeah. the main thing is... I think the, I think the main thing is the meta is going to massively change because I think a million Kickstarter people, not a million, a bunch of Kickstarter people are going to join and I think they're going to they're going to mess stuff up. That's my no, I thought. disagree. I disagree because I I am maybe I'm an elitist, but I think the meta is always uh, almost solely decided by the same 100, 200 people at the top of the ladder. Uh, so Lilypad says there's about to be 20 times as many people in. We'll see. We'll see if I'm wrong. I might be wrong. Okay. You got everyone in... Actually, everyone. The 24 people. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. <laughs> Show me how good you guys. I want to see you climb up the ladder. Show yeah. me that even if you came up later than everyone else, you're still a skilled player. So. Yeah. Show us a build we've never seen before. That's your yeah. your challenge. Show us some some new <laughs> some new bullshit strat that, uh, that we have never seen before. So, uh, producer so Lilypad has sent us the... Um, the current ladder because you can now view the ladder online, which is good to the yeah, yeah, to the website. Um, not many uh, vanguards on the top 20. Yep, not many vanguards. I think, uh, uh, uh I think that most likely to win if the bans doesn't change are going to be the, um, of course, the strong uh, uh, Infernals. The number one ranked is uh, currently parting. Vortex and Theory are also strong is, candidates. Theory, is that parting? I, I really, Benny, VD, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a parting second account. Oh, okay. Three is also parting. Yeah, Three yeah. is also parting. So parting is currently one is, first and fourth. Lucifer yeah. is incredibly good at uh, Vanguard. Yep. Is the best Vanguard player by far. Yep. And that, he thinks people are coping about Vanguard being weak. Shout out also to Elazer who won the Zero Space Tournament and is a pro yeah. gamer. Kel, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I don't know what he's doing currently. He was a bit yeah. of a cheeser. Mix is always really strong. Boss is also really strong, always. 3 2 1, let's jump. I have no clue. Kevin is strong. Eric, shout out to Eric. If there's one player who can make a bullshit build uh, with Vanguard, it is Eric uh, at rank 11. And then we have Keras, Oros, uh, Oak, Jardoser. They are. They're all strong players, but I don't think they're, they're realistic winners. There's no a couple people them. that are between 20th and 40th that I think are worth mentioning. Yeah. Skillus is on there, which is yeah. uh, you know, a StarCraft name. That's interesting. There's a mana. bunch of... Uh, oh yeah, yeah, you need mana in at number 23. There are a bunch of vanguards on the uh, top yeah. between 20 and 40th. The one I'm looking at, who is not vanguard, is an Inferno player, is Claire. Who is currently thirty three wins and two losses is kind yeah, of crazy. Yeah, really, Claire is really Claire, good. Claire was insane. Claire is one of the most insane players. I have no clue where she comes from, like which background. But I think nothing. But she's one of the most talented RTS players I've ever seen. Yeah, uh, a goat for sure. I, I I got my ass handed like as a grandmaster player coming in a new game. I got my ass fucking bent over by Claire. So. I don't know what to say. Uh, Skillus is always like Azure is also a really good thing. Yep. It's al always hard to judge. Uh, because yeah. Of the... I think it's worth saying basically the list is sorted by ranking points, and these players might have a much higher MMR than their ranking points let on. Suggest. Yeah, so the list is. And you have to yeah, keep an eye out for the weird rates more than the actual MMR because yeah, they actually, sure. sorry, for the ranking points, because the ranking points are mostly decided by. Uh, by how much you play. So this is the reason why people like Jardos and Hydra don't have as much as a shunt or fun, in my opinion, because their win rate is lower. Uh, it's mostly comparable to mine, which is also around 70%, if I remember correctly. Yeah. When you compare that. that to Vortex, 90% win rate over 62 games. Parting, 96 games, 95% yeah. win rate. But even, even, even Night Phoenix with a 80%. Yeah, B Lucifron with a 70%. Is, has a 90% yeah. Yeah, win rate. So, yeah. 
there's a lot of folks to uh, to keep an eye on. It's gonna be. I mean, it's gonna be all of these players. Feel free to prove me wrong. Show me that you're gonna win it. I did the impossible. I beat Vortic in the Zero Space Tournament. What were the odds of that one? I saw that the odds were like five percent in Twitch chat. Get <laughs> fucked. All of those who bet on, on me. Uh, uh, okay. On, on... Now that we've told the uh, the audience to get fucked, I think yeah. we just. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're, we're just keen to see uh, how the the rest of the beta plays okay. out. Obviously, there's the tournament, which is uh, two weeks. Next week is Katowice. Yes. So stay tuned because I'm not sure if we're gonna. Maybe we could do more than than next week. We will see. We'll see. Okay. Maybe for the first ones we could do some more, depending on how how lazy heart is feeling. Uh, the next one is gonna be about Starcraft. And Katowice, but I, I will we'll see how much uh, like we'll see how we organize it. We might have a space. We almost surely will have a very we'll find somebody. Yeah, we'll get somebody. We'll, we'll find. We, I'll use my deep connection in the deep state to talk about Katowice. Uh, and the uh, the the one after that is gonna be all about zero space. So people are gonna are really interested in my thirteen page manifesto with, about zero space and what I thought of it. I'm a top player in that game too. I, I I got money from it. I competed in the tournament. I beat Vortex. Say it Vortex one more time. I don't think people. I don't think people heard. Say it one more time. I beat Vortex. The biggest upset of my life. Let's go. V Vortex is not gonna. Vortex is gonna be like, bro. What the fuck? This dude is so. <laughs> like I, it's that meme where it's like I don't even know who you are. <laughs> I don't even know who you are. Yeah. Uh, stay tuned. I hope this podcast is success successful. Remember, guys, if you don't share this podcast and you make you don't make us uh, successful, there are a lot of bridges in Italy and even more in the UK. I'm kidding. It's a joke. <laughs> that, you know, there are like five bridges in the city I live in. They're all massive. That's not a threat. That's not a threat. That's not a threat. <laughs> That's not a threat. No. Okay. We, uh, did you guys know that I left my job, my studies, and everything in my life, and I invested yeah. everything in this podcast? Yeah, Man, we are full time. We are full time. Yeah, share this to your friends, to your family, to your grandma. Your grandma is gonna love me. I already know it. Uh, yeah, I think put it put it on in the background while you sleep. Right, put it on repeat while you sleep. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. subscribe, like. Thank you, everyone, and uh, see you next week. I love week. you, Monk. Don't get oh, too upset. Love you, Monk. Love you, Monk. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Bye, Lorembo. Love you. <laughs>